Patrick takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Welcome back to another episode of the Jet Take. It's a very special episode. We have we have a special guest on the line. We're going to get to him in just a second. Um, as always, I'm Ben Blessington alongside Kyle Fahey. Kyle, how you doing? I'm doing well. We we have a special guest on, a really <laughs> special guest. I'm pumped. Uh, we got some good things to talk about, and we got a season to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, as always, you can follow us uh, at the Jet Take on Twitter. We're on Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we're all over the place. You can listen to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher. We're pretty much everywhere. Um, all right, without further ado, let's get to uh, our guest. This is uh, left tackle for the New York Jets, Kelvin Beecham, uh, one of the Michael Cagnon's free agent signings this year. Uh, we're really excited about what he's going to bring to this team. Um, so we're going to talk to him a little bit about uh, a little bit about that. So, uh, Kelvin, uh, thank you for joining us. How you doing, man? Doing well. Thanks for having me, fellas. Uh, and, and thank you our for pleasure. taking time out of your day. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thank you for taking time out of your day uh, and just talking to the Jets. I, I know uh, just from talking uh, to some of your people that, that you're very excited to get uh, involved with the fans. I've seen you on Twitter interacting. So you definitely, in your brief time as a Jet, even though you've never played a game for the team, I mean, I think you're, you're definitely becoming one of the fan favorites just because of how interactive you are. So uh, it's really cool to get an opportunity to talk to you. Um, I guess we'll just start. Uh, just, I mean, how have, you prepare, how have you been preparing for this upcoming season? Uh, just take us through, basically, uh, since the end of last year with the Jaguars till now, um, you know, your process of signing with the Jets, uh, and, you know, now it's with the training and the diet, training camps coming up. Uh, just take us through, you know, the, this off season for you. Cool. So, um, you know, left the Jags, left Jacksonville, ahead to New York for free agency. Um, came into New York about the same time as I came in New York last year. Uh, when I was going to free agency. I think we were a day removed um, if you looked at the paperwork. So it was exciting to be back in the building, excited to see some familiar faces that I'd seen last year. And uh, a lot of people were pumped to have me this year because we weren't able to get it done last year. So it was mutually beneficial for everybody. Um, so once I signed, got back into training, was out in Arizona where, where I do all my training at with uh, LaCharles Bentley and uh, O-Line Performance. I uh, was out there until we reported to, uh, to OTAs and off-season training. Came in, uh, started, you know, started with my green machine. I know you talked about the fan interaction, played with that a little bit. You know, that's my, my <laughs> car that I talk about quite a bit. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, got after it in the weight room, got after it with the rehab that we, that we were doing on the knee. And uh, really just been excited about the opportunities that, that are here. You know, really enjoy it this off season. A new playbook, um, new offensive coordinator. Uh, for me, it was, it was new, you know, new everything. But, you know, for the organization, especially offensively, um, you had some some new pieces, um, and it was exciting putting those pieces to, together, and um, you know excited about training camp. So after I left OTAs and mini camp, went back out to Arizona, then back out there training. So um, today was my last day, um, so kind of refreshing coming coming down home to, to spend some time with family, and then uh, be back in New York on Monday, and um, you know some little final touches before we report on the 28th. Yeah, you mentioned, I mean, you guys are reporting for training camp, and I think it's like a week and a half, a little over that. Um, uh, but you did go through the offseason, you know, workouts uh, with Todd Bowles. You went through many camp. What are your first impressions of, of Todd Bowles uh, as the head coach of the Jets? You know, he's direct and right to the point. You know, it's not a lot of hoopla, not a lot of uh, talking that needs to be done, which when you think about football, it's past cracking. Uh, the past do all the talking. And when you think <laughs> about Coach Bowles, he's very direct. Um, he, he tells you he tells you exactly what he wants, and um, you know from a player standpoint, that's the that's the that's what you need. You don't need all the BS that can kind of come with with our profession. You know, you come straight to the point, keep it black and white, and uh, Coach Bowles does that. Yeah, absolutely, and I think I feel like that's the vibe we've been getting from some of the players. We have had some former players, and you know, some players who are on the roster now said similar things. Uh, let's let's stay with the guys who aren't on the field, or you know, with the organization. Mike McCagnan. Uh, I guess you could call it haggling with him. You did it twice. The second time was a charm, I guess. What is he like? <laughs> you know, again, I mean, he understands his role. He understands where the organization is right now, uh, understands that we need to win. Um, so what he's doing is putting the best product and putting the best roster together uh, that he sees fit. And, uh, you know, from an administrative standpoint, you got to do what he feels is best. Um, his job is on the line just like our job is on the line. You saw that. 
a GM was chopped the other day. So, uh, you know, nobody yeah. is um, above the law. <laughs> uh, everybody's kind of, you know, if you if you win, you stay in. If you don't, you know, it's the end of the story. You know, the NBA says it best, win or go home. And then the National Football League can be a little faster than that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and Kelvin, uh, I guess definitely one of the most exciting parts about you know, playing in New York, and and you know, maybe it's maybe I see things through a little, you know, uh, a green lens green at bias. times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I definitely think this offensive line is is a very solid group. Um, uh, I'm excited to watch each and every one of you. Uh, specifically, the guy playing to your right, James Carpenter. How is it, how important is it for you as a left tackle to have a, a guy you can rely on uh, on your right shoulder as a left guard? I know uh, in years past there's been some, you know. Uh, turmoil in that position uh, for the guys playing next to you, but you know James Carpenter, if he stays healthy, uh, which he has through his, throughout his entire career with the Jets, uh, he's a very solid left guard. So how, what is how does that make your game better as a left tackle? You know, it, it just gives you a lot of comfort when you have a guard like that on your inside. You know, your inside shoulder's taken care of, and something that ever happens to slip inside, um, and then you know just with his size um, and tenacity that he has, if, if a guy happens to spin. I know his chin may get knocked off, you know. Um, and for me, to have a guard like that on the inside is special. You know, I've already started to build a, a very good rapport with him. We've actually been competing with uh, with, with certain um, attributes, measurables that God has given us to, to try to come into, come into campus as best shape we can. So, um, you know, as met his wife, for me, you know, understanding people are on a much deeper level than just in the locker room is important. So I've had a chance to meet his wife a couple of times. Um, see his little son, so uh, understand that, uh, you know, he, he has something to play for. Um, and when guys have something to play for and, and, and you understand that, you take you take your job more serious, you know, because you know that he's dependent on you just like you're depending on him. Yeah, I love that. I I guess, you know, it, they say every man for themselves, but in football, it's, you know, it's a team type of thing. Um, I know you've had limited interaction with most of these guys, obviously new to the team, but uh, you know, in the OTAs, have you have you met anybody? You know, you're starting to become friends with them. What what's the chemistry like with uh, this O line right now? The O line is really good. You know, I, I knew some of the guys. You know, and, and the thing is about the offensive line, you kind of know everybody. You, you've seen them play at some point, or um, you've heard about them at some point. So w- I was with um, uh, Wes Johnson when he was in Pittsburgh uh, his first couple of years. Uh, trained with Brian Winters when he used, when he when he trained out in Arizona. Uh, still trained with Jonathan Harrison, uh, who was a, a free agent pickup. Um, yep. Know about Brandon Shell. Um, him and one of his good friends, uh, AJ Can, was was the right guard in Jacksonville last Jacksonville. year. Yep. Um, Quali is probably the only person I kind of don't know. Um, you know, know about Ben um, because you know his time in in, uh, in um, Indianapolis. So just kind of know about a couple of the guys that that are that are around the building, Jeff. Uh, who just been brought in from uh, Houston, you know, played played them a couple of times last year and the years past. So you kind of you kind of have a sense of people from time to time because you've either played with them or played against them uh, and know the type of players that they are. So when you get in the building, it's not like this alien that you're meeting for the first time. You actually have a sense of who they are, where they've been, the people they've played with, um, and just have very organic and real conversations. And that sounds like the best possible scenario. That's that's definitely uh, relieving for Jets fans when they're going to hear this on Thursday. Um, you mentioned Brandon Shell. This he's going into his second year. He started, you know, all three games last year. Um, he did a good job. Now you coming in, you're the veteran. You're still young, but we're considering you a veteran. You're, believe it or not, one of the older guys on this offensive line. I know it's a right tackle, but, you know, there's still the ending there, the tackle position. What are you going to try and teach him at such a young player, you know, with the talent that he has? You know, he's still developing. He showed good things. What, what are you going to try and do? You know, I've already started to, to develop some rapport with, with B-Shell, you know, honestly. Um, it, it's really just the, the small things that you may not think about. You know, uh, one of the things that, that he's been working on a lot is uh, his backside cutoff and making sure that his hips are staying square uh, when he's cutting off that backside three technique or cutting off any type of backside uh, d- uh, defender. So, you know, just the, 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 the simple fact of, hey, Shell, we want, I want you to step right here instead of stepping underneath yourself. I want you to uh, uh, put weight into that right foot so you can really drive off, the, off your instep to open your hips up a little more and put yourself on an angle. So it's, it's the little things that he may not have thought about or it may not have clicked the right way, 
to be able to, to, to talk about different ways in which he can get the same block done um, and the way that puts him in the most effective way to win that particular battle uh, when he has it. So uh, me and him have been talking quite a bit, you know, been talking about his hand carriage when he's pass blocking. But, you know, he's, he sees stuff in my game and, hey, why do you do it like that? Why do you, why do you see it like that? Well, what did you see? And that's the same thing that I ask him when he's, when he's lining up. Hey, what did you see? Why did you block it that way? Why did you step right here? Why did you punch it this time? Why did you wait a little bit? Why weren't you more patient? So those are the type of questions and type of concerns and, and things that, that, that I get him to think about, and he picks my brain about those, those very things as we're practicing, um, you know, uh, day in and day out. But I think, I think the world of him, I think he's going to be a great player. He has the body to do it. Um, now we've got to get the, 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 the fundamentals down. Because that's something that, you know, uh, coming from college to the pros that you don't pick up you know, until you you play some play some games and have some experience and have to block some some, some stellar D linemen and stellar DMs. Yeah, Kelvin. Yeah, he, he, he has the pedigree for it too. <laughs> yes, sir. And, he and does Kelvin, have a pedigree for it. Yeah, and, and Kelvin, you mentioned. I mean, you talk to him, you communicate with him, you give him help. Um, you know. As a left tackle giving a right tackle advice, is that is that that much different? I mean, I know it's, it's made that some guys uh, can only play left tackle, some guys can only play right tackle. I don't know necessarily how much experience you've had uh, playing either. Um, but, you know, is it that much different, uh, you know, being a left tackle versus a right tackle? Because, I mean, for years, I mean, it's always been the second most important, you know, position on offense is left tackle. Uh, but then, you know, some new stuff has come out, you know, this offseason saying, you know, right tackles are actually going up against the left ends. And you look at some of the top left ends, uh, like Vaughn Miller, um, and among others, like maybe right tackle is, 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 is more important in today's NFL. But so... Uh, I guess that's kind of two questions in one. But first, I mean, how different is it to give? Uh, how different? How different is it uh, being a left tackle versus a right tackle? And then, what do you think about the argument? Um, you know, uh, of which position's harder, right tackle or left tackle? Mm-hmm. So, you know, to answer the first question, the thing is, about, thing is, I played both positions. I played all five positions, including tight end, so six. I played <laughs> a position across all. We might need lines, that. So. We might need that. <laughs> Well, the thing is, the more you do, the less you get paid. But that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> we time. can dive into that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I play right back. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I played right tackle before. But the thing is, it's our weight distribution. You know, and if I were to have to play right tackle, I mean, I just have to drive off my left leg, my left inside leg, you know, my, my inside leg, which is my left leg. So you understand the principles. They go hand in hand. You're just flipping them, flipping them in your mind. So if I had to play left tackle and go play right tackle, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. If I had to play right tackle and go play left tackle, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And the thing is you understand the system from different ways and able to see the game from different ways. So for me, it's helped playing both sides. But, you know, able to give, uh, you know, the same type of pointers. Hey, if I'm, if I'm on the left side and I need to go right, I need to be making sure that I'm pushing off the instep of my left foot. If I'm at right tackle and need to go left, I make sure that I'm making sure that I'm pushing off the insteps of my right foot. So it's it's the same type of principles. It's just you push it from a different foot. Uh, and in actuality, if I'm at a left tackle and I need to go left, I need to push off my right instep. Same thing that would be happening on a as a right tackle if he had to go left. He's still pushing off that right instep. So it, it really doesn't matter. I feel um, because you got. You got to use weight distribution. You got to load the right foot. You got to load. You got to work out the insteps. Either way you go. So it's not so much of a right tackle versus left tackle, and it's this big, huge difference. Um, but I think some some guys are better right tackles than they are left tackles. You think about the right side. You most coordinators are right-handed. They're always running. You know, they are. You know, if you look at the playbook, the playbook is always right-handed. You always run right first, and then it's always really? thirty-four. I mean, think about it. It's you know, yeah. just I mean, just Simple, uh, well, I mean, uh, in a simple playbook, a new playbook is 34, you know, just for, you know, giggles, is 34 <laughs> alert 35 or 36 alert 37. It's all, it's, it's, it's something about, you know, you always call it a right play, you know, depending on the hash, but you always call it a right. If, if it was a, if it was this, this, um, this white page, it's people, they're going to line, line you up in the right formation. That's just how it is. So. Um, right tackles usually, you know, are, are more dominant. Or, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes right tackles are more dominant run blockers than left tackles. That's just how it is sometimes. Um, but to go to the other conversation that you mentioned about, you know, who's um, who's more important, both tackles are important because you, in this day and age you got defensive ends that can rush from both sides of the spectrum. 
Uh, you got Von Miller that can rush from both the right and the left. You got Khalil Mack that can rush from both the right and the left. Uh, you got some guys that are, are more um, uh, right ends versus left ends, you know, like guys like Tom Bailey. It's very rare that you will see him on the other side, but you do see him on the other side, just in Houston. You know, you'll see him mostly on the right side of the offense, but you'll see him flip from time to time. Um, you know, when I was in Baltimore, I mean, when I was in uh, Pittsburgh play Baltimore, you know, T. Suggs would, would flip from side to side. Dumaville would flip from side to side, but most times or not, when the game was on the line, Dumaville was on the left against the left tackle. and, and, and I mean, uh, uh, T. Suggs was on the left versus the left tackle, and Dumaville was on the right versus the right tackle. Um, so it just kind of depends. You know, you have uh, these DNs and, and, and D linemen that could go either way. Um, so both tackles uh, at some point um, – have to go against those premier rushers, and especially against three fourteens, it's five on five. Either way it goes, so everybody's on the island if you think about it. Yeah, for, uh, and, and Kelvin, you can tell from from your answers, you're very insightful. Uh, you know a lot about the game. Uh, I'm curious to get your your thoughts on, um, you know, I guess I mean I, we'll, we'll phrase it like this: just because every quarterback on the Jets roster is a right-handed, uh, do you feel any more added pressure since you're protecting his backside? I mean, he has to trust you. Um, that he doesn't have a you know 250 pound linebacker heading for him. Uh, do you feel the added responsibility as a left tackle? It's an extreme responsibility. That's why I love playing left tackle. You know, a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility is on you because there's going to be times when you're left on an island and you have to be able to, you have to be able to perform against their best. You know, one of their best edge rushers. Um, so that's just the nature of the game. That's just the nature of of, of being. Uh, a left tackle with a right-handed quarterback, but I've also played for a left-handed quarterback. I had Michael Vick down in uh, Pittsburgh, and, you know, I still have to make sure that I block, you know. So, um, yes, there's pressure of, of being a left tackle, but that's, that's that comes with the territory, you know. Again, uh, a, right, a right tackle, um, you know, the quarterback can see what's going on on the right side if he's a right-handed quarterback and he's throwing right. I mean, uh, the quarterback with a left tackle, you know, he may not see. That's why they got the bronze. Like, he's not going to see what's going on. So, yes, there's some added pressure, but that's why we play the game. And that's why I train the way I train. That's why I take it serious. I take pride in, in being a left tackle. I take pride in having that great rapport with my quarterback um, to make sure that I'm, I'm doing everything that I can to take care of him because his livelihood is at stake just like my livelihood is at stake. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about feeding your family at the end of the day. And, you know, we're yep. we're talking about – you know, all these other positions. And when I was doing some research for you, you know, obviously in preparation for the interview, I found it very interesting that during the draft process, and yes, we're switching to the draft, Ben, you know, this is my thing. Um, <laughs> they I had, love the draft. Yeah, I'm a big draft guy. Unfortunately, I was a little too young to be scouting when you came out. But um, in 2012, when you did come out, they had you ranked as the 24th left guard, according to NFL.com, I believe. And now mm-hmm. what you've become, you know, considered – one of the best left tackles in the NFL, you were five picks away from being, you know, Mr. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. That's what they call it. So you've worked your way from literally the bottom in the eyes of the scouts, you know, obviously wrong, to one of the best left tackles in the league. So what was that like? Did that leave like a chip on your shoulder when you got drafted by Pittsburgh? Some people (laughs) were saying that you would, you, if you were lucky to go in the seventh round and now you're here. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So it's something that I think about and I think about quite often because I look at the tackles that were drafted that year. I was number 31, if I'm not mistaken. Well, if you look at – well, I look at tackles. I knew I was a tackle, you know. <laughs> so from a tackle standpoint, I was the last tackle drafted uh, in my eyes. So the last tackle drafted, I can care less about guard. I knew I wasn't playing guard. I mean, I knew I could, but I knew I wasn't playing guard. Um, but I was the last tackle drafted. And that's something I think about all the time, all the time. Um, I pull that that uh, that draft uh, that draft board up quite often, and look who's still on on that list, and see where I, I stack up against those guys. So it's something I think about all the time. I've never forgot it. I'm never going to forget it. Um, that's that's what people thought, and it's still a perception that I still have to continue to defy uh, game in and game out. And I take pride, a lot of pride, um, in being drafted as late as I was, and I take a lot of pride in beating up a lot of heads and beating heads to the white meat, punching guys' chest out. Um, that's being a, a late round pick, so I enjoy it every minute of it. That's good to hear. I love the chip on your shoulder, and I looked it up. It was nineteen uh, tackles in front of you that were taken. Nineteen, not thirty, not thirty-one. I guess that's thirty-one. That's teams that passed up yeah. a whole bunch of other times. Oh, you know what? Hold on. 
<laughs> Kyle's got a fact check. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, I thought I may have just looked at, like, right tackles. Yeah, it was 19 offensive tackles. I'm looking at Wikipedia, though, so <laughs> please don't let me <laughs> put me through the wood shepherd well, I got, I if got that's the, wrong. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something along those lines. I got, I got, the, I got the documents at my, at, my, uh, at my house in Jersey. I usually, what I do every year is I usually print them on, I take them to FedEx and get them printed real big and put them up on my wall in my, in my, uh, in my room. So it's something that I look at pretty, pretty often. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, are you excited for October 1st? Do you know what that date is? October 1st. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, just tell me. Um, <laughs> what day? I mean, my, man, all I care about is... Uh, that's a Sunday. July that's a Sunday. So I'll give a, you a hint. That's a Sunday? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we got the Bills that day? Oh, there no. it is. I see. I know what it is. Jaguars. <laughs> oh, oh, see, I ain't even circled it. Man, I, I can care less about them. <laughs> it's their it's, it's, it's loss, man. That's, that's their loss. Um, you know, for me, I, I don't even it's, – it's one game, one day at a time, to be honest with you. I try not to look too far, you know, too far forward. Um, for me, you know, for me when I look at goals and what, what I care about is um, – it's first and foremost, okay, when do we report to camp? I got to work on my craft. That's what's most important. And in the first game, I know we play the Bills, uh, and that's really, all, that's really all my mind is focused on is really uh, working on my craft throughout camp and uh, getting ready for the Bills. Um, then when we get to that week, uh, whatever week that happens to be, then um, I know I got some business I got to take care of. Somebody got to get it. Um, I don't know who it's going to be, but somebody got to get it. Uh, <laughs> Well, it was going to be Dante know. Fowler, but I don't, I don't know about that one that was coming out today. So, I have, like I said, I can care less. <laughs> that, that's, that's their problem. Those are their issues. I can care less about them. Low power to them. Um, but uh, they made a decision. I made a decision. Um, and it is what it is. We've got to play each other, uh, you know, this, this year. Like I care, I, for me, again, I care about us winning. I care about us winning that first game, and I care about, I care about us winning the division. If we can win the first game and we win the division, we're gonna be in good shape. Y'all gonna be happy campers at the end of the year. If you win, if you win the division <laughs> and you take down Tom Brady, we will like we will personally enshrine you into the Hall of Fame. We will just <laughs> well, fly I, out don't, the I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't think all that's needed. But the thing is, is, that should be the goal. I mean, think about it. You you win the division, you have good seating in the playoffs. Hopefully, yep. get home field advantage, and then you let the chips fall where they fall. I mean, every goal, I mean, every, you know, I understand everybody want to say, well, win the Super Bowl. Well, you got to win the division first. You got to get in the playoffs first. So let's take care of things that we can control. We can control game one that's versus Buffalo, and we can control trying to win a division. And who cares who's in the division? I can care less who's in the division. I've been in tough divisions. Who cares in the, uh, in the division? You got to win a division. You win a division, everything else will fall into place and, and uh, take care, you know, take care of itself. Yeah, absolutely. But I would just like to know. I think the Jets have proven they don't have to win the division to beat the Patriots in the That's playoffs. True. Has, That's hashtag true. hashtag That's memories. True. Um, all right. <laughs> I, it's clear to me that you're not buying into this media. I I don't know if you pay attention to them. You know, the term fake news seems to be flying around a lot. All these people in the media seem to think we're tanking. Please just clarify uh-huh. for all of us. That's not happening. Uh-huh. Well. All I can care about, all I do care about, is the guys in that locker room. And the guys in that locker room will do everything that they that they possibly can to win games, a lot of games. Um, I don't find, oh, I don't see many losers in the locker room. So uh, I don't follow media. I don't follow New York media or national media. It's very rare that I watch ESPN unless I'm, unless I'm watching Drone Racing League or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but I just don't watch a lot of ESPN. You know, I, Twitter Twitter is enough for me. I, I see enough news on the score and, and follow the NFL. I get my news that way. Don't really pay attention to the to, to digital print or print or what people got to say in New York Times, any of those types of things. Um, I care about the guys in that locker room. And if the guys in the locker room say we're going to find a way to get it done, we're going to find a way to win, we're going to find a way to win. And I'm taking their word for it before I take anybody else's word outside of the building. Absolutely. Love yeah, Kel- yeah, Kelvin, I, I absolutely love your fire um, and, and your enthusiasm. And I mean, if, if all 53 guys share that same, that same attitude, I think this team can go uh, really far. You know, they're, they're a young team. It's exciting. Um, and it's exciting to see you talk about that because, I mean, there's so much negative press. And, you know, obviously it's, it's the New York Jets. It's, it's a New York team. They're under a lot of spotlight uh, and, and scrutiny. Right. So, I mean, that, they're going to make those headlines. But at the end of the day, none of the headlines matter, you know, 
week one against the Bills. You know, it's it's just it no, once, once, of it. once it's week one, it's football. You know, it, it doesn't matter yeah, what football. what a what a basement yep. blogger said about the Jets. You know, um, exactly. I, I I'm curious to to know, and I know you kind you kind of contradicted this earlier um, when you, when you said you know we're only looking at the Bills, but I'm I'm curious to know is there one matchup that you have looked at that you're somewhat looking forward to, or, or is are you is your mind just on the Bills, or is, is there is there a guy is, you're looking forward is, to playing? You know, it's it's just it's just on the Bills, but I'm looking forward to playing Von Miller again. You know, you, you always look for those those great matchups and those great tests. Um, and just me personally, just from a personal standpoint, I've never played in Denver. Uh, the first time that I was that I was with the Steelers, uh, I didn't dress, uh, and I still remember that game. I wasn't wasn't allowed to dress that game. Uh, I wasn't good enough at the time to be dressed. And then the second time was uh, when I blew my knee out. So I've been to Denver twice and haven't been able to play. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to playing uh, in Denver, playing with that crowd noise, uh, and playing Von Miller again. You know, played him last year in Jacksonville, him, Beware, and uh, and Ray. Uh, it was a good battle throughout the game. So looking forward to to, to playing uh, Ray and um, and uh, and Von uh, out there in at their at their home. Um, so I'm really looking forward. That's one game. Like that's not a game, but that's a matchup that I'm really looking forward to, um, and a place that I'm really looking forward to because I've never uh, I've never played in Denver. Uh, never been dressed to play, never been healthy to play, and I'm healthy. I'm excited about uh, that opportunity. Um, I don't forget things. <laughs> I don't know if you see that, <laughs> see that yet, but uh, I don't. I don't forget things. It's, it's those little moments in life and little moments in your career that uh, that if you keep them, keep them close to you, keep them close to the fire to keep that fire down inside you burning. And that's one of those. I haven't played in Denver because for one, I didn't dress, and for two, um, I wasn't healthy uh, back in '15 when we went there and played in the playoffs. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the ACL in 2015, and 2016 was followed by, you know, a concussion that limited you for two to three weeks, basically. What, what has been the recovery process like for ACLs? Because we hear it with, like, running backs and wide receivers. You know, you don't really hear about the process from offensive linemen, obviously, bigger individuals. Right. And I'm assuming it's a little bit harder. So you, you right. said you've been training, but, like, what are the extra steps that you're taking uh, not tanking, but taking to... <laughs> the media God, that, was, you, that was a terrible slip. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Very terrible get, slip. Yeah, to get, back, uh, to get back into health, get that knee in shape. You know, it, it's been a lot of unilateral type of movement. You know, you know, once you get out of that whole rehab phase, it's really working on the things that are most important to my craft. You know, uh, what's most important to my craft is being able to do, you know, 100-yard lunges without stopping. You know, being able to do um, single leg squats, being able to, to do ISO holds from from a lunge position, being able to put my foot in the ground with force on my insteps, um, being able to do just different type of movements that mimic or simulate what I would be able to do on a football field, and just the positions and the different angles that I would, that my foot would be in and my and my knee would be in uh, from a stability standpoint uh, to make sure that my feet uh, are and my my stance is being able to stay the same throughout my entire set. So it's like, again, you know, like I talked about earlier when we were talking about, you know, the fundamentals with, with B, you know, in, in, in reference to B-Shell, I'm working on those same fundamentals at a more granular level, being even more detailed. Because for me, um, yes, I, I've ended up, I played 15 games last year, but was that the 15 games that I know Kelvin Beecham was capable of playing? Yes, I played, but was it at the standard that I, that I hold for myself? No, it wasn't at that standard that I hold for myself. So for me, I went back in the lab got things corrected, got the body healthy, um, and now I'm, I'm, I'm prepared and primed for, for a great year um, because I've been able to work on those small, granular things that I know are key to my game um, and key to my craft. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but for me, from an ACL standpoint, Eric, I, I, I blew the whole thing out, ACL, MCL, and, and some of the meniscus. Um, it was a, a tedious surgery, uh, reconstructive knee surgery, so a lot of things needed to, to recover. But um, – I'm back now, not dealing in the past, not worried about the past. Um, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a New York Jet right now, and that's all that matters. Um, this is 2017. This is a whole new year, um, and I'm excited about this year. That's what matters. We hope you're a Jet for a long time, by the way. We love your attitude. That would, that would, be, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, Kelvin, we're, we're glad to hear that you're you're doing uh, you're doing a lot better. You're you're um, definitely. It sounds like you're getting close to being 100 percent at least, and, and that's 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 awesome to hear. Uh, you know, when at 100 percent, Kelvin Beecham is a scary man to see on that line. So we're excited. Von uh, Miller needs to be scared. He, I hope <laughs> he's marking that date down. <laughs> Von Miller's gonna be terrified. Um, but but Kelvin, 
Um, I guess, I mean, we talked about, you know, guys on other teams uh, you're looking forward to facing and stuff, but let's talk about uh, just, just briefly the other side of the trenches for the New York Jets. Uh, you know, obviously the Jets have a very solid offensive line, or excuse me, well, that is true, but a defensive true, line, yeah. and, and Leonard Williams, Mohamed Wilkerson, and Sheldon Richardson. Uh, I know you haven't really faced either of them in, in pads. That comes in a few weeks. Um, well, but do you have any I, first I play, impressions? I played I play, I play Mo a couple years ago. So oh, you did play, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I played exactly. Pittsburgh, Mo, uh, I got my first start at left tackle uh, versus the New York Jets. Uh, that was back in uh, 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, first start at left tackle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Jets lost that game. But, uh, what? Yeah, well, we, it, uh, it I, can't, I can't remember. I'm checking. But, uh, I'm googling was, it. Yeah, we lost 2013. <laughs> we won in 2014. Um, but uh, but what are your what are your impressions of Leonard Muhammad and, and Sheldon? I know you said you went up against Mo, um, but and then in practice yeah. and in the locker room. Yeah, for sure. Um, just so, on the other side. So, uh huh. So all three of them are very talented, and they're talented in different ways. You know, uh, Big Cat Leonard. Um, you know, he's tall, lanky, plays with great leverage to be that tall. Um, he's not crazy weight room strong, but when you put him on the football field, it's a completely different story. Um, Mo is really starting to get back to the Mo that I know um, and that I played against when, when he was uh, wreaking havoc, you know, in the league. Um, and Sheldon, you know, Sheldon is a, to be his size and his stature puts offensive linemen in, in, in very bad situations. You know, you can put him on the inside and he can really um, put a put a guard in the mixer. You put him on the outside and he can do a great job of pressing the pocket. So. Um, all three of them provide a different type of um, tenacity and a different type of energy uh, and a different type of synergy for that defensive line. But all of them uh, are very, uh, well, I, I would say, you know, top premier uh, type of D lineman uh, in the league, and we have them all, uh, all, in our, all in our house, which is good. Yeah, it's awesome to hear. And, and you know, they, they say you win the game in the trenches, and it sounds like both sides of the trenches for the New York Jets um, are, are secure. They're looking good, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm curious, as an offensive lineman, I always like to ask any offensive lineman I interact with. Um, generally, it's the same answer, but I don't know since you're left uh, tackle. Uh, do you like to run block more or pass block? I've generally gotten run block is way more fun. But since you're left tackle, I know, I mean, that is, that is. I mean, uh, probably left tackle, um, since, again, as we talked about, you're protecting the blind side, is, is really focused on you during uh, passing plays. Um, but do you like sure. to run block more or pass block? Man, whatever it takes to win the game, I don't care. I'm about winning. <laughs> if it's run Love blocking it. that's going to win the game, we can, we can run it for 350, 400, run it 40 times a game. If it takes us throwing the ball 60 times a game for 600 yards, then we got to throw the ball <laughs> 600 times for 600 yards. If our quarterbacks are throwing 600 yards, <laughs> uh, I think we found everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's really, it don't matter, man. It, it's, for me, it's about what it takes to win the game, and whatever it takes to win the game, that's what I want to do. Um, I, I've been in games where, where, where I, we ran the ball you know, 40 times and ran the same play 10 times in a row. I've been in a game where we've thrown the ball 60 times. So I've, I've, been, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. So whichever one is going to help us win the game, that's the one I want to be in. Absolutely. I love that. All right, here's my, like, last football question before we start talking about your amazing work off the field. Um, do you care that Madden's hating on you and they only have you a 75 overall right now? I saw that, too. I was, I was, I was a little <laughs> miffed there. Like, I always get Man. you on my draft champions team. I'm, like, you're always a beast. Like, you rarely give up a sack. But yeah. they're not loving you, man. I mean, we got to fix that. Well, I mean, I, I, was, I was on a 2-16 two, two team last year, whatever we were, 3-16, <laughs> whatever we were last year. <laughs> you know, um, when, you're on a, when you're on a team that bad, your rating going to come down. So that's uh, <laughs> that's part of the territory. But, uh, you know, I ain't played Madden in a while, so I guess I got to get that score back up. <laughs> hey man, you get, Ben's got PS4, I got Xbox. So if you want to run one, you know where to find us. Um, all right, here, well, let's talk about your amazing work off the field. Um, you know, I've been reading up. You love helping young people, uh, disadvantaged youth, and you're like trying to build them for their future, get good careers. Uh, tell us a little more about what you do, why you're doing it. Perfect. So, you know, I have two vertical platform, well, two platforms, um, two philanthropic platforms that I really do a lot of work in. One is Ending Hunger, both uh, domestically and internationally. I'm actually heading down to Mahia, my hometown right now, 
uh, I'm being named the Central Texas Food Bank uh, at large at ba- ambassador. I don't know what the at large stands for, but <laughs> they're naming me the, uh, an ambassador for this particular region, uh, donating about a hundred thousand uh, dollars to this tri county area to serve over six hundred thousand meals. Um, you know, I think by the end of this year. So um, that's one of the verticals that I did a lot in. I have a couple hunger partners: uh, Feeding America, World Vision, yep. um, Bread for the World, which are all um, hunger related. Uh, partners that I do a lot of my hunger, you know, hunger work with. And then on the STEM front, um, I've really uh, focused a lot on really providing uh, young people access, uh, awareness, exposure to both college and careers in the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I've done that in a number of different ways with a number of different corporations in a number of different parts of the country. Um, I've done it in San Diego uh, with Infinity. I've done it with American Airlines in Pittsburgh. Um, I've done it with GE. Um, Chevron. I've used. I've been to. I've been the past two years. I've been at the Super Bowl and Chevron Super Bowl. Uh, Chevron. They call it the they call it STEM Zone um, at a Super Bowl. Whatever the Super Bowl, where, wherever we're at. So I did it in San Francisco last year. Did it in Houston uh, this past this past Super Bowl. Um, so I've been working with uh, Chevron a lot uh, on some of the STEM work that they've done. So um, it's really kind of just really making sure that young people. Um, especially those who don't have access to those STEM disciplines, have access to it to think differently about their careers and, and about their future because technology is changing the world. It's changing the way we talk. I mean, you think about uh, we're, we're, uh, the way we talk right now, you're, you're able to record it on your side of the, on your, on your side of the line. Um, yeah. Those different um, pieces of, of, of technology that I want our young people to have access to, the way these phones are, are changing the world. You know, I'm a big drone guy. Drones are changing the way we see the world from from an aerial standpoint. Um, artificial intelligence, virtual reality. You got virtual reality for for NFL and NBA. It's changing the way we see the world. Um, you got digital currency that's out right now. It's crazy. You know, um, it, it's it's so many different things that technology is now um, on the forefront. And I want to make sure our young people um, are not behind because you know you have people like uh, uh, Russia and China and Japan that are extremely uh, advanced in technology. And we want to make sure our, our, our U.S. kids and our kids um, here in the U.S. have the same type of access, the same type of opportunities um, to be the, the, the next generation of innovators. Yeah, absolutely. I think Ben and I can say it from like our standpoint because we're fairly young. Uh, with the technology, we've been able to build a brand for ourselves, and obviously we're in no way comparable to the people you're working with, but it's just phenomenal how technology has changed the world and what you're doing to even progress it. Now, you were named uh, a finalist for the most valuable philanthropist in sports. What, what, was that honor, like, what was that honor like for you? Well, it showed me that, uh, for one, um, I had did a little something right. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, for, for that two, means we're on a good track. Yeah, I mean, I'm on a good track, but I still have a long ways to go. Still have a lot of a lot of work to do, um, a, a lot of uh, young people to expose um, to these type of disciplines. So it's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But I'm, I'm extremely humbled and honored that uh, I was chosen um, as one of the top philanthropists. Uh, it would be nice if I if I if I win win it and, and have that ten thousand dollars that's given to my uh, my charity, so I can be able to then. Um, use it to be able to, to, to continue to invest into those young people. So excited about the opportunity, um, excited about the honor, uh, humbled by it, but uh, understand that I still have a lot of work to do. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. Yeah, and, and Kelvin, uh, do, do you have a uh, – you, you talked about, you know, some of the stuff you do off the field. We, we, we're we really intrigued to what you're saying. And, you know, talking football and talking this, we can tell you're a very uh, smart, intelligent guy, and this, this sounds like a, a, a great cause. Uh, I'm curious, and I think some of our listeners are probably curious, I mean, where, can the, where and how can the fans help uh, what you're doing off the field? Do you have, you know, a, a website, a Twitter page, something where, where they can go yes, and sir. they can help and donate or, or whatnot? For sure. Well, for me, you know, the donating stuff that happened down the line, you know, for me, I really want to engage the New York Jets fans. So for me, follow me on Twitter, um, KelvinBeecham.com. Follow me on uh, on uh, Facebook. I really need y'all on Facebook. I don't have a lot of Jets fans on Facebook. I got to get that up. Um, but uh, Facebook, Instagram, and then if you want to uh, follow what's going on uh, and what I'm doing in the community, www.KelvinBeecham.com. 
um, subscribe uh, to the to the uh, to the website, and you'll get some news. Um, and when I start doing events in New York, we'll love to have uh, some fans come and uh, help me out. Absolutely, man. We love to support you. And um, you're doing a Facebook Live thing tonight, right? I believe you're. Yes, sir. I'm doing. Yep, I'm doing it right after. Uh, right after. Right after this call is over. Oh, I'm pretty sure Ben and I can. Ben, you have a Facebook, right? Or you could sign up, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I think I have a Facebook. I haven't used it in a while. I, I generally stick to my Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we're we're Twitter bloggers. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not Twitter Facebook bloggers. bloggers. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a probably do I'm a probably do a Periscope sometime before training camp. So I, I make sure that I hit to hit my Twitter people too. Yeah, if if you need any help promoting that, just let us know. I mean, we have a decent following. We're we're building it up right now, but uh, we can definitely help you. Yes, sir. Any any way any way I can help you all, just let me know as well. All right, Calvin. Well, we appreciate the interview and thank you for your Wait, time. Well, hold on, hold on, hold oh. on, Kyle. Kyle, Ooh, Kyle hold job. on. Ben I just job. realized uh, we did we did put out a tweet. I forgot about it. Um, you know, ask, a fan wanted to ask a question, um, and ah. one of the questions she asked. I, I got to pull up the tweet first. Hold on. Let me let me make sure I get the uh, the, the right tweet. I think up. she asked. I think she asked about um, what was there, something yeah, I was I working on this off season. No, yeah, it said she said. So I want to make sure I get the at right. So this is at show your fearless. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, show it. I mean. Okay. Sure. Show it, Kelvin. Um, what is one skill you'd like to master before the season starts? Um, so I guess I mean, what's one skill you're you're trying to work on? Um, you know, as as the season gets, uh, as, as season approaches. So first, let me kind of define a skill. A skill is something that can deteriorate over time. Um, it's something that's acquired. So for me. Uh, a skill that I've really been working on a lot this off season. I haven't mastered it yet, but it's something that I'm working on mastering is my stance. Uh, because in the fourth quarter, everything you all some in football is yes, they say it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. But if you start bad, you may finish bad, and everything starts with your stance. So for me, I've really been working on my stance a lot this off season. I'm trying to master that particular skill because in the fourth quarter, if that stance is crappy, that play may be crappy, and I don't need no crappy plays in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I, well, that's 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 awesome to hear. And then I, I just before we let you go, before we wrap up, uh, we're uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll ask you for your social media in just a second. Oh, well, actually, you already you already answered it, so never mind. Uh, I want to ask one question, um, just a prediction for this year. It, it can be anything. Oh. It can be it can be your stats. It can be a record. It can be you know whatever. It doesn't have to be serious. It could be a uh, joke. Just one prediction for this upcoming season for Calvin Beecham. One prediction for Kelvin Beach in this upcoming season. I hate making predictions. Um, <laughs> Maybe something about Madden. Let's see. What What do you think you're going to get up to? You Madden. think they're going to give you some respect? You're in a bigger market. Um, you know, I live down in I, Florida. I, I, I know. I, I can. I, I should be able to get back into at least a B by the time Madden, the next Madden come out. I, I, I can give you that prediction. I can get back up to a B. Um, All right. Before uh, that's that's that that. that, that that gives you a little something to chew on. All right, yeah, I, I like it. I like that prediction. So, so we just we got to get to that. I mean, I guess we're counting B minus. So are we saying you get to that eighty by by Madden nineteen. Yeah, yeah. By we're gonna Madden start. 19, we're gonna start this. It. We're gonna start this campaign. We're gonna add all yeah. the Madden developers. Just beat them for eighty, and we'll see. We'll, we'll see what we can get. Well, well if, if, if you're gonna do, do that, if you're gonna do that. If you're going to do that, you might as well do man for 90. Don't do it for 80. <laughs> <laughs> Be, beat him for 99 right there. Yeah. Uh, oh, Kelvin, boy. Kelvin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we had an awesome time. Uh, you can follow Kelvin at Kelvin Beecham Jr. I know he shouted it out earlier on Twitter. Um, he mentioned he he's a Facebook. He shouted all that stuff out earlier. Uh, Kelvin, thank you so much for calling, uh, calling in. Uh, it, was, it was awesome to talk to you. You're, as I've said uh, numerous times, I'm just very impressed. Uh, you, you were very insightful, very uh, in-depth in, uh, in answering football stuff and off-the-field stuff. So it was, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, and so thank you so much for, for, um, uh, for calling in. Yes, sir. Anytime. All right, have a nice day, man. Have a nice day. Yes, sir. We'll do. All right, that was Kelvin Beecham, uh, starting left tackle for the New York Jets. Uh, that might be one of my favorite interviews we've done. Um, he, was, he was very engaging. Kelvin uh, is such a nice guy, um, and we're really excited um, you know, to see him play this year um, in the future. Kyle, Kyle, any thoughts on, on the interview before we uh, move on? Yeah, I thought it was a phenomenal interview. Um, Kelvin, very insightful. Uh, I found it very interesting that 
I never even thought about this. You know, I probably would do it myself if I was an offense coordinator. Obviously, I'm not smart enough or annoying enough to be an offensive coordinator, but <laughs> they go to the right side. I'd, like, never thought about that. So I wonder, like, at the line, when you, like, a counter or something, they have to, like, specify, hey, we're going left this time, guys. Wonder if, I thought that was interesting. Well, like, yeah, no, I mean, he gave very, I mean, um, he gave very, as, as I've said a few times, he's given very in-depth answers. That was a terrific answer talking about, you know, he talked about the X's and O's. Um, you know, he talked about, uh, you know, obviously if you're, if you're at least a former offensive lineman in, in high school or college, you would understand some of the stuff he said. And, and we, we understood it, or at least yeah. I did. I don't want to speak for Kelvin or for Kyle. Um, wow. But, but Kelvin... <laughs> Hurtful. Well, the Kai, Kai, Calvin, Kyle, it's, it's, you know, it's the same. No, I meant thing. the understanding part. No, uh, I, I would uh, be honored uh, to be Calvin Beecher. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but, like, uh, you know, he talked about, you know, pushing off your right foot is the left tackle, talk, pushing off your left foot is the right tackle. It was just, it was really uh, awesome to yeah. hear uh, a nice long interview. So, and again, anyways, uh, thank you so much to Kelvin Beecham. Again, you can follow him at Kelvin Beecher, and, uh, Kelvin Beecham Jr. Uh, that's K-E-L-V-I-N. B E A C H U M and then J R uh, on Twitter. Go follow him, Jets fans. He's very interactive. He will respond to you. He's a great guy to follow. He needs some more Jets fans, so please, if you listen to the show, go follow him on Twitter. He's a great guy. Um, anyways, so that was uh, awesome. We're excited to see him this year, and we wish him all the luck um, in the future. So we recorded this interview Wednesday. Tomorrow night, we're going to record uh, the the episode part with the, with the with our, us talking about the Jets and having some callers. Um, yep. So I guess we'll pick this episode up. Um, tomorrow. All right, and we're back the next day. This is uh, now Thursday, uh, 24 hours for us, but about like five seconds for you guys. Uh, again, thank you so much to Kelvin Beecham uh, for for you know uh, doing that interview with us. Uh, maybe my my favorite interview I've ever done. He was super insightful, um, and he's definitely has a career in broadcasting if he so chooses. Um, all right, Kyle. Before we uh, talk uh, some Jets, let's 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 shout out some things we we didn't plug him in at the beginning of the episode because uh, we were more you know worried about the, the Kelvin uh, interview. Let's. I mean, first I think I think we we mentioned this at the top of the hour, but you can follow us at the Jet Take. The main thing we we did not shout out um, was. Yes, Kyle and I have some critically acclaimed. Critically acclaimed. <laughs> critically acclaimed. They're getting, they're getting amazing feedback. We really love <laughs> all of you guys. Haters can't bring us down. All right. Well, yes, uh, we do. We do. Uh, we did make some uh, some Jets uh, t-shirts. Um, so you can. Uh, I'm gonna get the uh, the website. Uh, but the best place to yeah. find it is you go to our Twitter at the it. Jet Take. Um, you can go click our blog page in, in our bio, and that takes you. Ba- that's a giant link that has our website. Just and the uh, website modeler now. That's uh, he I did a really so. good job at making that look decent. So. Yeah, the, the blog actually looks good now, and despite I yeah. haven't posted on it yet, I I do have an article coming out uh, tomorrow on NewYorkJetsFans.com, and it, it'll is it original? Yes, it is original. Uh, it'll be oh, posted okay, on the blog um, probably the next day or whatever, just, just to post it on the earthjustfans.com first, but it, it will be on the blog mm. as well. Um, yeah, so we are theloyalist.com slash thejettake, one word. Yep. Just just a few shirts, just a small thing we're just doing, uh, just for fun on the side. Um, if you're interested Big things in the future, fun. though. Yeah, we do. We do have some. We do have some things lined up with uh, yeah. with a few guys, and uh, it'll, it'll be fun. But right now, it's just a small thing. So uh, yeah, just some yeah. sick figures, you know. Just oh, you know, we're right, just, Kyle. We're just oh, doing right. our thing. Um, but yes, so you can check that out, um, and then you can also check out the blog page that I mentioned, which is in the bio of our Twitter. But that's thejettake.libson.com. Um, that has all our episodes, a few articles that we've done. Uh, it's reorganized, so you can find everything by articles, interviews. Um, you know, it has our Twitter even linked to it. It has our shop. It's it's pretty. It's a pretty good place. Uh, a pretty good home base to find all our content. Um, all right. Without further ado, Kyle, uh, let's get into it. Um, I guess we'll start with with a bit of a new topic tonight. We're just gonna jump right into it. Just just you know, no no, no segue some new, whatsoever. Some new topics for us tonight. Yes, I guess so. Um, there's there's not really um you know there hasn't been really that much news for the Jets. Um, is we are about, uh, the, I mean, training camp starts on the 28th, and today is the 20th. So we have eight days until training camp. Um, so Randy Bullock days until training camp, I guess. Um, so we're excited. Um, so this is our second Randy. last show. Yes, Fat Randy. Second, second last show uh, until uh, till training camp. So it'll be fun. We'll have some predictions tonight. We'll have some new topics. Uh, we'll, 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 we're, we're, having some, we're having a fun show, and as well as the Kelvin interview at the beginning of the show. So without further ado, Kyle, uh, let's jump right into it. Um, this is just a the question just that, that we, we just came up with as we were you know doing our, our production meeting, but Kyle, I'm interested to get your take on it and we'll ask some callers. Um, but is there one move 
that you would redo for Mike McCagney this offseason? One move that you would change, whether that be, you know, signing Morris Claiborne, drafting uh, Marcus May in the second round, would you would you instead draft, you know, fill an X player? Uh, just one move that you would change for Mike McCagney this this offseason. I know it it hasn't been as as praised as his offseason was in 2015. Um, and even 2016 got some praise with the, you know, bringing in Matt Forte, bringing back Mohamed Wilkerson and, and Ryan Fitzpatrick at the time, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, getting all those deals done. But this offseason was a lot quieter for him, but I actually think it, it, it might live up to be the best offseason he's had um, as a GM of New York Jets. Um, I'll give my take on, on why I think that, um, but before we get into, you know, his offseason and discussing it as a whole, let's each give one move that we would redo, or if you don't have any, uh, you don't have to give it, you know, whether that's cutting Eric Deck or whatnot, just, just, what is one move that you would redo for for Mike Cagnon? Um, I w- I would trade Eric Decker. I think that was a mismanagement. Um, I don't think they should have came out and said we're either gonna trade or cut him because then nobody's gonna offer you anything. I mean that <laughs> that's just simple like logic right there. Um, basically gave away our best player on offense for nothing. Like we literally got nothing in return. Um, I know it would have been a little more dead cap, but at the end of the day, we're not a good team. We're not trying to sign good free agents, you know, who are going to, like, push us over the edge for Super Bowl. Obviously, we're making an effort to sign good free agents that are, like, good for the team, you know, in the long term. But it's not like we're going out and signing, like, a Le'Veon Bell, like, this, like, tomorrow or something. But, um, hey, 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 next offseason, let's know. He, he was yeah. a J- big Jets fan, so... Yeah, I think there are plenty of dispensaries in New York, too, so he's going to fit right in. But, um, (laughs) yeah, I would trade Decker. I would trade him to the Titans for, like, a fourth-round pick. Well, the thing that happened with that one, I mean, I don't think the Jets planned that. What what it was is, you know, no, neither of us are in in the Jets locker room. But what I gather is the Jets were trying to do the friendly thing to Eric Decker, and were telling him, hey, man, you know, we're going to either trade or cut you. Uh, And his agent, um, you know, wanted, you know, probably was like, Look, why not leak this? They're going to cut agents, us. agents, man. Well, they're, they're these agents. <laughs> they, 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 you know, he, he leaks it out, and then, you know, then the Deckers get to choose where they want to live. Why not? So, I, yes, I, I think that's, that's reality a show's coming one. back, too. Like, good for them. I'm watching Eric and Jesse <laughs> very soon. Eric and Jesse, you, you're excited for that one? Yeah, for yeah. me, I'm trying to think, um, you know, I, I, I actually did really like this offseason, and, and here's why. Um, I, it was a much needed off season. It's an off season the Jets haven't had in a while. I mean, you can make the argument that after the um, you know 2013 season, they had a similar off season where they where they got rid of you know all the all the vets from the AFC Championship days. With they cut Mark Sanchez and they cut Antonio Holmes and they cut you know all these guys and they traded you know Darrell Revis or whatnot. But I just think that uh, this. Or actually, they traded drawers the offseason before, but um, I think it was the best one because it was it was finally they 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 cleaned they cleaned house basically. They they are they're putting the young guys in positions to win. They you know obviously a lot of people are getting caught up in the names. Uh, this is a bit of what my article is about, but it, a lot of people are getting caught up in, in the names and not the production. When people hear oh the Jets cut Darrell Revis, Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, Nick Mangle, David Harris. Uh, they're you know they're hearing that as wow the Jets are tanking. But if you look at 2016, you're going to see. In actuality, the Jets made themselves better uh, by doing a lot of these moves. Uh, you, you can see that a lot of these guys were either A, hurting the team, uh, B, had ginormous contracts, uh, C, they had a, a, a person underneath them that, that you know, would be better and younger or whatever. So I love what Mike McKenna did this offseason. I mean, we're heading into this, this year with, with a young roster. It's an exciting roster. You know, will the Jets make the playoffs? Most likely not. Um, but he is setting us up for the future. Well, you know, never say never, but he's setting us up right, for Beaver, the future. <laughs> I already have the haircut. He he's setting us up for oh, the future. You're anyway, living I, up to the Snapchat name. I know, thank you. Uh, yeah. he, but basically, yeah, he, he's um, the Jets are are putting themselves in a position to be a team that can win consistently uh, if they follow this model. They stayed patient. They didn't sign a lot of big name guys. Uh, you know, that's not to say next year when the Jets have 80 million plus in cap space, can they sign a, a big named guy? Sure. But I don't think the Jets are going to burn all their money at once. They're going to invest in, the, in this core. They they have uh, they have rebuilt the core. You know the core of this team is now Leonard Williams, Jamal Adams, Quincy Inunua, Bilal Powell. I mean, you're going to see guys take the next step. Role players like J- Jordan Jenkins. Give the uh, ball to Quincy. Daryl Roberts. Bilal Powell. Just saying. Sure. Well, <laughs> stick figures. 
Ah, God. Um, you know, I, you could see a surprise guy like Elijah McGuire take the next step, or Darius Stewart, Tyrone Peak. When you have a roster like this that's so young, I mean, although the veterans were great in 2015, 2016 they weren't. Um, when you have a roster that's this young, you're going to see guys like this take the next step. A lot of people are, you know, saying the Yankees and, and comparing them to the Yankees. I compared them uh, to the 2014 Blazers, since, since they were doing baseball, I threw out some basketball, where the Blazers lost four of their five starters. Besides Damian Lillard, they replaced him with guys who were younger role players, you know, probably known as worse. The Blazers were expected to do, you know, worse that year, and they ended up going farther in the playoffs than they did the year before. Um, just, you know, I think I think it'll be good. It'll be good energy. I don't think guys will be, um, you know, quitting on the team as much as they did last year. I think it'll be better energy. It'll be a tough team. It'll be an exciting team. You'll see young guys like Justin Burris and Sharon Peak uh, and Darren Lee. All these guys take the next step. Not all of them, but you'll see guys take the next step. The Jets will go into next offseason knowing who they can build this this team around, and, and I'm excited because going into last season, it, it was it was it was a conversation of the window is closing. This is we're opening up a window, and and you know is the mm. is you know have we have we is this the finished product? Is this the team that's going to take us to the Super Bowl? No, but I think this this is a good foundation we're starting to build. I loved the Jamal Adams pick. I loved a lot of his picks. Uh, we're we're going to see the fruition um, of his of his some of his later round picks, McCagnan's later round picks. And I think you're going to start to see this core built up. And then next offseason, Jets have 80 plus million in cap space. I don't think they should go on this huge spending spree. But you know, who knows if if they have an opportunity to land a guy like Le'Veon Bell, you know, when we'll cross that bridge if we come. I I I don't think that that opportunity will arrive. I think that I think the, the Steelers are probably bringing him back. But if we do, who knows what we'll do from there? But I actually think the Jets are good in the trenches. They have some young pieces around them, and I think they can build around it. But as far as the move, I would change. Um, I agree with the Decker one. Um. You know, as, as excited as I am for these young receivers, and there's a big pro and con, uh, I think Decker would have been nice to keep around for, for you know, a year um, to build, you know, Christian Hackenberg and, and help and help him, or, or Bryce Petty, help him get acclimated to the NFL system. I think that would have been nice for the guy. But then you look at, you know, for cutting Eric Decker, a guy like Sharon Peake is going to get more opportunities, a guy like Chad Hansen, a guy like Ardarius Stewart. So it's a big plus or minus. Um, so, yeah, I either would have kept Derek Decker or, like you, uh, trade, uh, traded Eric Decker, um, you know, without, without leaking that information. Um, so you're at least getting something in return. But you know what? I, I, we got some cap space from it. Um, but, yeah, if we kept him, it would, have been, it would have been a nice safety valve for Christian Hackenberg. But who knows? Possibly that could be Austin Sparing Jenkins this year. Maybe it's Quincy Inunua. Maybe it's Robbie Anderson um, and whatnot. Uh, Kyle, your thoughts? Um, I don't think you can have it both ways, Ben. I think you either keep uh, Eric Decker to develop your young quarterback, or you cut Eric Decker and you start your older quarterback to develop the younger players. Because I'm not expecting young receivers to develop with young, terrible quarterbacks. I That just seems like a bad idea to me. So I think the Jets messed that up a little bit, or Josh McCown's going to start. Which is well, no, I, 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 I expect Christian Hackenberg to start. That, that is my expectation, and I think that that is a, a reasonable expectation. Uh, one of the things that I came across, and I'll, I'll give credit where it's due, at Elliot Christ, Christ, <laughs> at E L I O T, and then C R I S T. So it's Christ, Christ. I, 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 Christ, I butchered that. The dude from Pro Football Focus. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, he tweeted out Quincy Nunwa in the slot. His yards per run route yeah. was 1.22, and his wide receiver rating was 73.5. But when Quincy Nunwa was outside, his yards per route run um, was 2.65, and his wide receiver rating was 104.8. So 104.8 on the outside versus 73.5 on the inside. Um, you know, will this you know calm some of the people saying that Quincy Nunwa won't be able to contribute on the outside? I've been on that that bubble, not saying he can't contribute on the outside um, because, I mean, we saw him on the outside. We saw him go up against number one corners like Stephon Gilmore uh, and Malcolm Butler. Um, but, Kyle, our, our, yeah. I know we talked about this. I know we talked about this. Let's not did. say... Let, what? Let's not say Stephon... Hold on. Stephon Gilmore is not a number one corner. He was last year. The dude I mean, gets burnt more than Revis. That doesn't uh, mean he's I mean, the So one now, one. now he's the number two, presumably, in New England. But I'm saying at the time, he was the Bills number yeah. one corner. Huh. Well, right. anyways, so my, that's my, like saying, "Oh yeah, I beat the Jets corners last year, so I'm a, I'm a Hall of Famer." Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's he, not he, that impressive. He's put it up before. I it's think Quincy what does have the skill set to be number one. We're gonna hope he develops into that. But we've talked about that. You know, sometimes he has a tendency to disappear. You can blame that off on the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks. But we've talked that topic in uh, to the ground. I want to ask you another question about Quincy Um Kyle, 
if Quincy gets hurt, who do you think would slide in to that number one spot for the Jets? I mean, I mean, obviously the, the next guy in the depth chart is Robbie Anderson, but are you comfortable with Robbie Anderson going up against number one wide receivers? I mean, although Robbie did have the best rookie, uh, wide, you know, the best season for a Jets rookie wide receiver since you know Keyshawn Johnson, um, he doesn't necessarily have all the the, the routes in his uh, in his wheel shed. Uh, wheel shed. <laughs> I guess what, what what's the term that I'm missing here, Kyle? Is it wheelbarrow? And what is it? It's uh. Ooh. Wow, I'm spacing. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, um, yep. Um, this is absolute dud. What is right. it? Wheelhouse, wheelhouse. That's what it is. Oh um, uh, yeah. God, I found it. I found it. People are throwing me off. People are throwing me off. Yeah. Well, it's weird because this is two episodes in one. It's just, it's, uh, you know, it's whatever. That's my fault though. But yeah, basically, I, mean, I literally just woke up from a nap. I, I like seriously <laughs> woke up from a nap when I texted you like 15 minutes ago. I like looked at my clock and I was like, 7:47. Do I have something to do? And I'm like, oh crap! I have a podcast. <laughs> I forgot about that. But um, that's that's me every week. But but Kyle, yeah. As far as as far as who can be yeah. the number one, do you think Robbie Anderson could slide into that spot? Do you think it would be a guy like Sharon Peak, who probably has a better build um, for he? I mean, he looks like a number one wide receiver out there as far as I mean, his height and his weight um, and his physicality. Do you think it would be a guy like Chad Hansen? Uh, who do you think would slide into that number one role if a Quincy Newell can't do it? Or B Quincy Nuno, the more likely one B Quincy Nuno gets hurt. Uh, if Quincy gets hurt, um, I'm probably gonna have to say our Darius Stewart. You know, barring health, um, much but more I of mean, a complete receiver than Robbie. I was gonna say when but, you but does, does like, the five ten five eleven. You had a four minute rant. All right, all right, no, all right. not at all. He plays so much bigger than he is. Um. I'm trying to find a good comparison. Well, yeah, I, I guess this isn't Drew's a good comparison. comparison of this, this isn't Antoine a good comparison. Bolden. Yeah, this this isn't Antonio a good comparison. Holmes. But no, no, no. But like, I guess no. now that I said it, I mean, I guess guys like you know Steve Smith and Antonio Brown are shorter guys who are the number one receivers for their team. So yeah. I guess height doesn't totally matter. That I mean, this contradicting my point. But you know, is our Darius Stewart, Steve Smith, or Antonio Brown? I mean, maybe he could be in a few Possibly. years, but he's not right now. Yep, it's a possibility. But I'm he's pretty not right high now. On him. Uh, I know you're, <laughs> you're pretty high on him. So he would be your next guy to fill in at, at the number one. Don't don't you feel he's ideal for the slot position? I think he works better outside, personally. I think he's got speed similar to Robbie Anderson. I think it's a little less. I don't want to say he has like complete Robbie Anderson speed. Uh, I think he has better like body control when he's going up to catch a ball. I think he has better hands, better route runner. He's just more suited to be a number one wide receiver. But you, you were... Going back to the whole Stephon Gilmore thing, I would say I was more impressed by Robbie Anderson just torching Richard Sherman, a guy who I don't think extremely highly of because he only plays one side. But the stats don't lie. He's usually really good year in, year out. Uh, and Robbie absolutely burned him. So I love Robbie outside. Um, I don't know what his production is on the outside because obviously we have no quarterback and he has a limited amount of you know plays to watch. But, um, you know, if, if Quincy gets hurt, I'm putting um, Ardarius at number one, Robbie at two. And give me big body Sharon Peak in the slot. Just throw it up over the middle. We've seen him run in the middle of the field for a touchdown. It, it wasn't, he didn't catch it, but um, it was still in the middle of the field, and it did end up being a touchdown. No, yeah, just, I, look. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, and as we've said a bunch of times, I mean, to, to somebody who hasn't followed the Jets that closely, when you're saying, oh, we're going to have a, a three-man wide receiver group of Robbie Anderson, or Darius Stewart, and Trump Peak, they're probably like, I mean, ew, the Jets are the worst wide receiving core in the league. But when you actually think about it, I mean, these guys are young. I think a lot of these guys are going to su- surprise, not all of them. I mean, there's going to be some duds on this team, um, no doubt, undoubtedly, and you have to look at that quarterback position. Who's getting <laughs> in the, the ball? Jets, there's going to be some duds, undoubtedly. We have expectations are too high for someone. We don't know yet. There, but. there is, there is a but coming here. The, yeah. But the but is, I mean, is, this is a lot of young talent. I mean, Sharon Peak is a guy that was a seventh round draft pick last year, but I mean, should have been much pre- higher. Should have been higher. He looked good in the preseason. He looked good in his limited action. He made a heads up play against Seattle and scored a touchdown. Uh, he has the body for it. I'm excited for him. Robbie, as we said, undrafted guy. Who, who had the best season for a rookie Jets wide receiver in a long, long time. He played absolutely fantastic. Andrew, let's keep in mind, I mean, that's with some terrible quarterbacks. I mean, he's yeah. putting up a lot of production with Bryce Petty and, and, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, uh, you know, I, I just think, I think that this wide receiver group, although I'm a little miffed about the Decker cut, I think, I think at the end of the day, 
is it better for the team is the question that I you can't really answer now. Um, but I think I think it really would have been beneficial to Christian Hackenberg to have somebody like that. But again, this is a question mark. This isn't an absolute. It it is very possible that Sharon Peak and Quincy Nunua and Robbie Anderson can turn into very good wide receivers. So Christian Hackenberg, it isn't like he has nobody to throw to like that. Um, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's I guess that's where we'll just leave that. Um, Kyle, I want to I want to switch switch gears here a little bit. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, talk a bit about here. I, I know I know you're a little pessimistic about this season, mm. um, but I want to get your um, you know just just throw out, we're gonna throw out some about best what? case scenarios. What am I pessimistic about? The team, like everything. everything, everything. Oh yeah, okay, yep. All right, life, Fair travel. Yep. Remember your, your remember your rant yeah. against travel. I hate travel. I'm traveling this weekend. Uh, I have to wake up at like. All right, he, tomorrow. nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody All cares. Right. Well, apparently, yeah. Hey, it's original though. Like I don't hear anybody okay. else. Okay. Oh, oh no, no, yeah. no. We're, we're not going there. Um, yeah. Kyle, let's 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 stay on track here. Um, I want to get your best case scenarios um, for the year. So we're just gonna go back and forth. Just throw out a best case scenario. Uh, it could be oh. a stat thing. It can be um, it can be a player. This player will will rise to the occasion. It'll be. I mean, I'll give you an example. This will be mine at first. Uh, my prediction is that Elijah McGuire will have a big part in this offense um, the last month of football. So that I mean, that's a best case scenario for the season. I think that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, the last I, month of football. That means I, our third string running. No, 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 no. That that that's a positive thing, and that's that's not like uh, yeah, we're terrible. I mean, like he's gonna have a big role uh, on this team. I, I think his hands um, are undeniable. I think I think he is. He does have some speed. He does have some agility. Um, so I just think he he's a solid young running back. It, it just haven't had a good run, young run, running back in a while. Um, you know, since since the past few of our starting running backs have been free agents, you know, minus Bilal Powell, but Bilal Powell is 28. Um, so I think Elijah McGuire uh, will will give this Jets offense another um, another edge, uh, and I also think it'll be beneficial to Christian Hackenberg, who will be starting those games, to have a guy coming out of the backfield. Obviously, he already has it in Matt Forte and Bilal Powell. All these guys in the Jets running backs can catch, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, I think John Morton likes having a running back who can catch out of the backfield, um, but I especially think Elijah McGuire will will like. You know, um, Bilal Powell did in 2015 and 2016. He comes in and he he'll bring a different sort of energy um, that off the bench than we're used to seeing. All right. So you want my best like best case scenario prediction? Yeah. You know, well, yeah. We'll just do a few here and then, and then we'll move on. But just just a few, just just to brighten the mood here, Kyle. Um, Jets get the number one overall pick, and we find our oh, quarterback. Oh God. So so what record would the Jets? I mean, is that is that a two and fourteen? Is that a one and fifteen? A little lower. You're saying we're not going to win any games. We we'll probably win one or two. All right, hold on. Let's let's just look at the schedule here. Okay, Kyle, we're doing this. We're doing this. We All we right. were going to do this later, but just we'll yeah, come back we're to just going to do it now. We're just going to do it now. Let's get it out uh, of the so, way. Okay, I I'm going to run through this really quickly, and yes. so don't inter- don't interrupt because you you're going to have your your chance to talk and explain everything. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to unplug my mic and I'm just going to listen. All right. Anyways, a game that I, I'm going to say is you know winnable or whatever. I'm not saying the Jets are going to win it, but you look down this roster. There are or this roster, this schedule. There are some winnable games. Uh, there's definitely a, a rough patch as I'm looking at it. Um, you know, once we hit around October, you're going to play the Dolphins or the, the Patriots, Dolphins, Falcons, uh, Bills, Bucks, Panthers, Chiefs, Broncos. That's that's a pretty tough stretch. But you look at it. I mean, week one against the Bills, uh, divisional rival. You know, I. I Obviously, the Bills have some talent on their team, but I, I and it is in, um, you know, is it is in Buffalo, but I don't think um, that that game is is out of the reach for the Jets. I think the Jets have a better defense than people are giving them credit for. The offense is a whole another story, but you're telling me Bilal Powell and some of those wide receivers can't score. So I'm just gonna say like Bills, that's a winnable game. Um, you know, I don't think the Raiders in Oakland. But will they win, Ben? You say oh, we're, we're going to come back. Or we're going to come back, Kyle. We're going to come back and have this debate. Just let me, just let me, just let me go through. Bills, that's a winnable game. Raiders, I think that's, you know, when I say winnable, don't I mean even. like don't even. No, I know I'm not. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying the Raiders uh, yeah. because I mean, if if I go through, I mean, technically every game on this roster is a winnable game. It's first yeah. quarter zero zero, but. As far as like great Bills, observation, Ben. Jaguars, Browns. Uh, you look through Saints, Chargers. Uh, I think we can either you're the naming Panthers teams the that are currently more talented than us. The Dolphins twice, the Bills twice. It's like, and I know the Dolphins were a playoff team last year, but you're telling me that the Jets can't get close in either of those games. I think they can. The Jets are normally always close to the Patriots in at least one game. It, could that change this year? Possibly, but literally every single year 
for the past, I mean, God knows how many years. I mean, the Jets have had a game where they're, you know, down to the wire. Uh, and then it's like, you know, could they steal some upsets? I'm not saying the Jets are going to go to the playoffs. Um, but, you know, you're telling me the Jets can't beat the Bills once, beat the Jaguars, beat the Browns, um, beat the, beat the uh, Saints, beat the Chargers. They're, that's already five. And let's say they steal one against the Dolphins. That's six. Um, so what's the six outcome with, here? You, you, you could, outcome be, you here, could beat the Panthers or the Bucks. Uh, that's seven. Mm, you could mm. steal one. It's just like I, I think this is a six to eight win team. I see six to eight wins. You're uh, high. I'm not high. Uh, first of all, that California go, lifestyle, still, Ben. I live in Oregon, so that doesn't even make you sense. Lose, you used to live in California. It carried I lived over. In California when I was like four, so well, I don't think that's. That's, I don't think that's, that's your roots. Place. That's how you. That's how you grew up. That was instilled in you. Like, like, okay. Anyways, Kyle. Uh, from Go ahead. Make a Florida six. joke. Make a Florida joke. There's so many that I would. Would you see that video of the guy just shooting the tires of the, of the car? All right, that's Miami. That doesn't count. Like that counts, dude. That that is. I can't, I, I can't your make. Your state is a peninsula of hell. Okay, it's just. It's really not. Yeah, it's just terrible, Kyle. I much rather live in Florida than Oregon. Just saying. Agree to disagree. Um, but no, I'm just, all my point is, is Damn, for the people saying that the Jets, like you, are going to go 0-16, are going to have the number one draft pick, I think that's far from the truth. This so, defense, Ben, you're, you're saying... This these... def- I'm, oh, Kyle, don't worry. I'm going to give you plenty of time to talk. This right. defense has talent on this team. I mean, on paper, obviously last year they did not play like it, but on paper this defensive line can be the best in football. That is not that ridiculous of a statement. You have three guys who have all been the pro bowlers on a 3-4 defensive line. You have Muhammad Wilkerson, Shelly Richardson, Leonard Williams... Uh, I think they all can play. I think they all can do a good job. Uh, the linebacking core, I think they have some young outside linebacker pass rushers. Lorenzo Malden going back to his rookie weight. Jordan Jenkins really came on last year. Um, Dylan Donahue is a pass rusher I'm really intrigued by. Uh, inside, Darren Lee, a fast, athletic guy we haven't had. We haven't had speed at that position really ever. Demario Davis is statistically better than David Harris was last year. We're also forgetting about a guy in Julian Stanford who, you know, who also, hold on Kyle, who did display some speed and athleticism. He's been hitting the weight room hard this offseason. Who knows? He'll, I mean, that's an example of a guy when you have a young team, a role player that really takes the next step. I mean, how awesome would it be to have Julian Stanford starting next to Darren Lee and they're, they're actually solid. I mean, two young linebackers. I don't know if that's going to happen. Then you look at the back end, two uh, our first and second round draft picks and our, and our, you know, as our safeties. Safety was a huge, probably the weakest part of the team last year. I would say that over cornerback. I mean, they're gonna, that's going to protect a lot of the defense. Even over quarterback? Our corners are, well, okay, second most. Most in the defense. Our corners, um, Morris Claiborne's better than Darrell Rivas. Buster Screen is solid in the slot. So then you're oh. looking at the number two position. You're telling me either Marcus Williams, Justin Burris, or Daryl Roberts can't do uh, better than what the Jets did outside at number two. I, I think that's false. So I think I think, I think think you can see Morris Claiborne, Justin Burris, and, and Buster Screen as, as the back end compared with Jamal Adams, Marcus May. That's a solid secondary with the front two. Now, am I looking through this with positive you know, optimism? Yeah. Yes, but I'm just saying it's not that far out of possibility that the Jets have a good defense next year and don't get the number one pick. You look at the offense, a very solid offensive line. You can agree to that, Kyle. Uh, a young tight end we drafted, Austin Spring Drinkins, has dropped 30 pounds in the best shape of his life and was a beast in minicamp, although we have mini confirmation camp. for that. Um, wide receivers, wide receivers. I mean, we've already talked about that in depth. Uh, the, the talent and at, at wide receiver, Quincy Nunwa, a, a guy who who showed he can go up against number one corners and dominate when he gets the ball. Robbie Anderson, best rookie receiver uh, that the Jets have had in a long time. You look at Ardarius Stewart, Chad Hansen, two young rookies. Mike McCagman, the hand picked, uh, which is which maybe not maybe not the best thing with Devin Smith. Um, you have Sharon Peak. I mean, and they'll never leave the guy behind that. I'm just saying. You look around, there is talent on this team, although it's, it's scarce and, and, and it's hard to find at times. But, I mean, Bilal Powell, Elijah McGuire, Matt Forte, the guy in between the tackles that's solid. Really the big question, and obviously, it, yes, was that a very optimistic gloss over of the team? I, 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 know, yes. I know that that's not that's not. You're thinking of this realistic. as a Jets fan, Ben. You can't I think of this I, as I a know. Jets fan. I'll, Kyle, I, I'm doing this as a Jets fan. I'm just saying that the, I'm not, I'm being, you know, optimistic with I'm probably being 90% optimistic, but there is some realism there. I'm not You're saying that green, the You're Jets the Jets green. replaced the Jets replaced Ryan Fitzpatrick, a terrible quarterback, with a terrible quarterback in Josh McCown. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, the quarterback I position Pet, got Bryce worse. Perry, Bryce Petty's media no, it's gotten better. I'll it's tell you false. why. I'll tell you why. You want to know why? First yeah. of all, um, the no, Jets replaced no Gino, no Gino. For, Gino's not even in the equation. The guy played uh, a quarter uh, and a half of football last year, uh, and then better than what we had. He. Yes, I agree with that, but he was not on the roster as far as, I, as, far as I'm concerned. He, he did okay. not play. Only like um, seven weeks, right? 
And we're going uh, into last seven weeks, weeks of the year with Brian. Seven weeks, fa- seven weeks, seven weeks, Kyle. I mean, but he played he played a few series in the Arizona Cardinals game and then a few series in the Baltimore Ravens game as far as ACL. Okay, but besides the point, you, Christian Hackenberg and Bryce Petty are not Geno Smith. Kyle, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Uh, and Geno Smith, uh, we're ignoring that from the equation. We're saying a, a – You can't a, ignore that, though, and then say the quarterback position got better. All right, fine, fine. We'll, we'll bring Geno Smith in. Why? But here's McCown what I'm gonna and say. Fitzpatrick are a wash. And Gino, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Yeah. McCown and Fitzpatrick are both terrible quarterbacks. However, McCown in his five starts uh, did have a higher uh, rating, uh, pass rating, than Fitzpatrick did. Slightly higher. It was 72 point something versus 69, but it's still slightly higher. Um, and the other thing you're not accounting for is Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg both have another year under their belt to study the playbook, learn, play. New playbook. I mean, brand new playbook, by the way. I know way. it's a, I know it's a brand new playbook, but they, I, I know it's a brand new playbook, but they've been in the NFL another year. Um, they're still going to practice. They're studying this new Gina playbook. Smith's I'm just saying, in the NFL longer. Kyle, we're not talking about Geno Smith. If you want to say Geno Smith, that's but a if guy. If you're going to say the quarterback, oh, well, Kyle, better. all your all your but arguments about Geno Smith are hypothetical. The guy never all produced for the New York Jets. you're saying about Christian Hackenberg and Bryce Petty are hypothetical. I am aware, but I'm just saying you're, you Bryce can't. Bryce Petty went to throw, Baylor. But you, I, I'm I aware. Don't know what his is, <laughs> I'm aware, but you up. you can't you can't say that Geno Smith is God. But guys, it's like the guy never performed for the Jets. I I have no doubt that that is. If he was, I'm aware, but I'm just saying. But you're throwing him around like, well, they're not. They're not Bryce but Geno Smith. It's like they're guys, not. Geno Smith threw one curl route more. to Quincy Nunwa, who took it 70 yards on his own for a touchdown. I'm, you're look, forgetting about the. Look, would I have loved to keep? Would I have loved to keep Geno Smith over Josh McCown, and he would have been better? Yes, but I'm just and saying. Kyle, but you're you're not accounting. You're not even giving Christian Hackenberg a chance here. Look. I'm not giving a debate. I, you you are correct that that the quarterbacks are terrible. I'm just saying I think it's similar to a wash. But then you have to keep in mind that Bryce Petty and Christian Ackerberg another year in the NFL. You're not going to give them any any improvement for that. You're not going to say that there's any chance that they're better than they were last year. I think that's false. I mean Christian Ackerberg we knew was a multi-year project. He had a year to sit. You're telling me he won't be even closer to ready. Anyways. That was a very optimistic rant. That was a very optimistic gloss over of the team. I'm so, aware of that. I'm going to do. I'm mine. just saying. I'm just saying the Jets will have good games. I there's. I, I would put money that the Jets will not be the worst team in the NFL. They are a six to eight win ball club. They will be better than they were last year. So what does that get us at the end of the day, Ben? What does that get us? That gives us a solid core to build around, Kyle. I understand you want to tank and be terrible and get Sam Darnold. Well, great. Now he's surrounded by excuse me my language a shitty team. I would much rather. That's not I, true. Yes, that is true. Kyle, if the Jets go 0 and 16, they have a shitty team. It's more on the quarterback and coach. If you so you're telling me, okay, yeah, for sure. Best case scenario, the Jets defense is amazing. Everybody else is amazing, and then the quarterback just throws the ball into the <laughs> opposite end zone every play, and then the Jets. Based on what play. I've seen, that's that's a reality. I'm just saying, Kyle. I I would much rather instill a you younger, put the a younger on the show vibe. Now, ben. That's more work yeah, for yourself. It's it's literally one button. It's fine. I'm yeah. just saying it's it's literally. I mean, guys like uh like you, uh, guys like Jordan Jenkins might take the next step. Guys like Daryl Roberts, Justin Burris might take the next step. Sharon Peak. So I'd rather have some of those guys play better. I'd like this team to compete, win some tough games, maybe upset a team, play in all of these games. Chris Nackenberg looks solid, and we finish with with seven and nine, eight and eight. I'd much rather have that. You go into next off season, you have you know seventeenth pick in the six, well probably fifteenth to seventeenth pick in the draft, fourteenth around there. Uh, and you have $80 million in cap space, you get yourself a nice mid-round uh, uh, first-round prospect, and you have $80 million. Let's say you want to say, you know what, the running game wasn't as good. Le'Veon Bell, we'll try to, we'll try to get him. We, we might not. Depending on Christian Hackenberg's performance, and this, this was going to be our next topic, we'll talk a little bit about this. You know, for the Kirk Cousins guys, I, I, I'm a little... No. You know, I'm a little... No. Op- I'm cautious about no. that because, first of all, that's a bridge that we're not crossing now. However, is there a scenario where I could say that maybe the Jets should look He's into it? He's going to San Fran anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, but, I mean, the only situation where you would, because, I mean, if the Jets are really terrible, then the Jets are picking number, you know, in a position to get a quarterback, so we're not picking him there. That means Christian Ackenberg has to be good enough, but not good enough to keep off Kirk Cousins. So that means they would have to be a six- or seven-win team but then Christian Ackerberg pretty much has to be terrible. So the defense that would be the game. dumbest idea, though. In that like, situation, if... in that situation, you could you trade for a guy who 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 is a Pro Bowl level quarterback? Give me Sam Bradford. Just give me Sam Bradford. I don't want Sam Bradford. You look at the stats. He's a top ten now, quarterback. He's looking at the stats, not watching the tape. What does that mean? <laughs> you're looking I... at the stats. You're not watching the tape. You're looking at numbers. And you not know, I watch tape. Sam Bradford. 
I know you watch tape, but how much tape of Stan Bradford have you watched, Kyle? Answer this is honestly. I've actually, I actually Answer have watched a bit. Since tra- I actually have watched a bit because I got Game Pass recently, and Travis put me onto him. I don't know. It, Sam Bradford, I, I, I don't know. Sam, uh, the only thing that would fend the me off Kirk Cousins is, is the... He is makes the, good decisions. Oh, yeah, he's a veteran quarterback, but I'm saying Kirk Cousins is at least young enough to actually build it. it, it it's a mute Sam point. Bradford's we're not, like not going to even... We're not going to talk that much about Kirk Cousins because we're not... It, it's not happening. It's yeah, not happening. He's going to Sam. Brad, Bradford was drafted in, in 2011, I think, so he's, he's somewhat young. But he's young. Anyways, the point of this whole right, thing so was. Yeah, oh, you're gonna rant. You, you're. I'm gonna yeah, give you as much yeah. time as possible. I'll, put, I'll honestly put myself. How many? In. Like ten minutes. Unlike, unlike you, because you, you did not put yourself on mute. Uh, anyways, my point to this whole optimistic rant is: are all those things I said gonna come true? You know, probably no. not. Is Julian Stanford gonna, you know, gonna, uh, you know, rise to the top and, or not rise to the top? No. At least be a solid, you know, starter next to Darren Lee. You know, ignoring Demario Davis no. there. Maybe, probably not. You know, there there are a lot of things that are going to go. You know, maybe Sheldon Richardson isn't as good. Maybe this defensive line isn't as good. But I'm just saying, all those things I said, That's all those positive scenario. things I said, some of those things are going to happen. You know, the safeties might look good. They might not look good. The offensive line might look good. They might not look good. Some of those things I said are going to happen. I think I think there are going to be a lot of young guys on this team, a lot of young role players taking the next step. The Jets have redefined their core. This is their new foundation. They're going to build around it. They're going to, you know, foster some more in the draft. I do trust Mike McCagnan, and I think he's going to start to build a good foundation. My point is, is I don't think the Jets are as terrible as many people think. I think they're going to beat the Bills once. I think they're going to beat the Dolphins once. I think they're going to beat the Jags, Browns. Um, I think they'll beat. Um, I think they'll beat the. Uh, I'll go Panthers. I think they'll beat the Saints. I don't think they'll beat the Chargers. You can even move that Panthers game. There's still six wins, and so uh, I'll, I'll even adjust it for you, Kyle. I, I'll say five to eight wins. But I, I, I no, I'm not, I'm not going to change it. Six to eight wins. I think this team will finish better than they did last year, and it'll be a much better. You know, if it's six and ten, it'll be a much better six and ten than last year's five eleven. The young team, they'll play hard. They'll look good. Role players take the next step, next foundation to build around. All right, I'm going to meet you. You can rant uh, on the schedule on this team as for as long as you want. Let me know when you want me back. Yeah, um, that tells me Ben's going to go do something. Um, week just one. here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure you don't have a hot date? I'm just sitting here, Kyle. All right. Week one, uh, and first, I would like to say, this is all on paper. This team has proven absolutely nothing to me. Miracles happen. I'm very aware of sure. it. Big, big fan of Angels in the Outfield, one of my favorite movies of all time. Miracles happen. Um, but right now, I have to go off of paper because I have not seen preseason. I have not seen training camp. So this is right now, off paper, who's better than who, in my eyes. Obviously, you know, my eyes aren't the best legally blind in the state of Florida, but <laughs> this, this is, I, cannot drive, I cannot drive without glasses. I would get arrested. Like, seriously. I, have, yeah, I, can I, would, show love, I would love Fahey to get arrested for driving without glasses. That would just be the most Kyle Fahey, like, my crime Fahey. committed ever right there. Yeah, juice is loose, baby. Driving um, without glasses. Yep. Two-time offender. All right, so let's say, let's start with the Bills, and I do it by position, so this is going to be a little lengthy, and I'll make it a little fast, because obviously you guys know the team, but I'll break down the Bills for you. I, I sped up my voice pretty fast there, so... so yeah, I'm like, I know, that this is, I know this is going to take a while, and I know they're like, oh, here comes Kyle with another brand, but I'm being honest, so Just don't... Just hit that 10-second that skip, 15-second skip, like, seven times. You'll, you'll be yeah, fast. Yeah, you'll be good. Uh, we get the same views anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm pretty vocal on Twitter. Um, all right, so the Bills, they have a better quarterback, yeah, better yeah, a wide receiver. a little too vocal there, Kyle. Uh. Oh, yeah, at least I don't do it on my show. All right, so the Bills, they have a better quarterback, better what? wide receiver. What was that? What? <laughs> what was that, that diss? Well, you said a little too vocal on oh, Twitter. Oh, yeah, 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 I caught up. I'm a little slow yeah. there. I, I, yeah. I got it. I, I thought you were that. talking to me. I thought you were talking about me. No. We're not, we're not talking about that, Kyle. Keep going. Talking about Baldy. Move on, move right, on, so, move on, move on. All right. Uh, better quarterback, better wide receiving core, better running backs, better offensive line, uh, equivalent defensive line, better linebackers, and secondary is a debate because I don't know exactly how Tredavious White's going to fit into their system yet. But the Bills are just better top to bottom. I think our coaches are even. Um, so that's in Buffalo. I would probably give that to the Bills. The Raiders, I'm not even going to break it down. I'm not a big fan of their defense, though. So if like their car, like I don't know, maybe he slips on a pile of cash somewhere in his house and like tears something and he's out for the year. I don't know. It's a possibility. But uh, two losses, 0-2. Dolphins playoff team only got better, better quarterback, better running back, better wide receiving core. Our O line's better. Uh, our D line's better. Their linebacking core is better. Their secondary is better. Um, I would give that to the Dolphins. So I think they're just a better team, better coach, much better quarterback. 
Jaguars. This is one of those games that we could definitely win. I think, uh, you know, in New York, I think the Jets are going to be sick of losing. Um, yeah, but just to clarify, you already have them at 0-3? Yes. Um, think correct. All right. I mean, that's that's your jet take. This is my jet take, Ben. Stop trying um, to brand that. No. We're going to put a stick figure shirt out with my okay. jet take. That's what we're doing. Um, they have a better quarterback just by, like, the, the slimmest possible amount. Um, they have a better wide receiving core. I um, think they have a better running back core. Uh, we have a better D-line. They have a better linebacking core. And they have a better secondary. They're the better team. But Whoa, I think how do they have a better secondary? Uh, Jalen Ramsey. Uh, uh, Jamal Adams. Okay. Uh, God, who's their safety? Crap. <laughs> this is going to piss me off. They have a really good safety. Oh, and they signed A.J. Boye. So they have... Morris Claiborne. Boy. A.J. Boye is a one-year wonder for the Texans. They who... have two number one quality corners. You're telling me A.J. Boye, a guy who played one year... For the Texans. Okay, fine. You know what? Keep going. Keep going with your roster breakdown. Morris Claiborne is the equivalent of one year. I don't know what you're talking about. I know about. Morris Claiborne's a veteran who plays really well when he's not hurt. I'm just saying, you, A.J. Boye was a guy I wanted to stay away from in free agency because he but just reminds me. he's a good player. He's the as of classic last year, free agency. As of last ca- year, on paper, Ben, he is a good player. Yes, but and he's a classic just- free agent example of a guy who, who plays well on his contract year, gets the big money, goes to a team like Jacksonville, and then just peters out. I don't, I don't think he's going to be good. Ben, not everything bad happens to everybody else. We're Jets fans. You've got to remember that. Not everybody's Ryan Clady. Um, all right, so they have the better <laughs> Ryan Clady or a big Was it Ryan Clady or a big-time free agent, Kyle? He was, like, last year. Unless I'm forgetting about somebody. Well, we traded for him. Matt Forte? I mean, was, okay, no, anyways, not Matt really. Forte wasn't a one-year. Okay, anyways, keep going. Keep going with your, with your take. I think the Jaguars are the better team by a slim amount, but I think that's just one of those miracle games. Excuse me, pizza burp. Uh, that the you Jets win. You think the Jets beating the Jaguars is a miracle game? What they have is a the definition team? of a miracle. A win. <laughs> so you have the Jets. Okay, fine. Keep going. Keep going to Cleveland. Yeah, um, they have better quarterbacks. Running back core. Uh, as a coin flip really depends on the day. I'll go Jets. Just. Like maybe one of those another miracle games. They have a better wide receiving core. Uh, you, better. You know, it's, you know it's grim when Kyle says beating Cleveland is a miracle game. My God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, their O line's better. Uh, our D line's better. Their I think their yeah their linebacker core's better. Christian Kirksley, uh, Jamie Collins. So yeah, they're better. And uh, they have Joe Hayden. I think they still have Deshaun Gibson. Do they still have Deshaun Gibson? Uh, Jabril Pepper is not a big fan of him. I'll say our secondary is better than theirs. So I'll say the Jets win that game. I will say the Jets win that game. We're in Cleveland. Uh, so there's two wins in a row. Watch At out. Two and three. We're two and yeah, three. Two and three. Bye bye, Sam Darnold. Uh, then wait, we... just, just to recap, at, at this point, I have the Jets as three and one. Oh, wait, wait, not three and one. That, that doesn't make sense. Yep. The schedule. Great. I have them at, well, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the schedule. I have them at f- uh, three and two. So three and two at this point. All right, so which game did you think we would win? The Bills? I had, I had them beating the Bills, Jaguars, Browns. I could make the argument that they could beat the Dolphins at home. So I, you, you could even say 4-1. But um, I'll, I think they'll beat one of the Dolphins games. Even, even though the Dolphins are a much better team, I still think the Jets will steal one. Um, I don't know, that week three, I mean the past two years under Bulls, week three, they'll be an all-white. It'll be your home opener. They lost the Eagles week three. They lost the, the, the Seahawks week three and all white. I'll, I'll say they'll lose that one. So I think yeah. they'll beat the later Dolphins one in, in Miami. Um, yeah, so um, so I have a set two or three or, you know, two wins in a row. We're doing good, and then we just hit hit the wall. Patriots. You're telling, you're telling me they won't be close for the Patriots? And I'm doing, game? Ben, I'm doing wins and losses. That doesn't mean we win. We literally had to go to overtime. Let, we had let like me a clarify, ten let point me clarify, lead. Let me clarify something, and then, then you're going to speed this up a bit. Um, yeah. Is are these are these losses? You know, one. The first question is, is who's the starting quarterback in these games? Is it Christian Hackenberg? Is it Josh McCown? Or is it Bryce Petty? And then two. Josh McCown. Yet okay. Or Josh. Oh. So Josh McCown's still starting by week, even though they're they're. You're telling me the Jets. Okay, I'm going to just say this. There's no way the Jets lose the first three games and then trot Josh McCown out there against Jacksonville. I think it's I think it's the possible. Jet, if the Jets start 0 and 3, they're going. All right, Christian, get in there. Um, 
no, okay. So you're gonna say Josh McCown's still starting, and then number Dude, two are, are these are these losses last year? Are these lo- wait? What did you say? They gave Ryan Fitzpatrick to win last year, week six. Yeah, but Kyle, it was a much different team going into that. The Jets were coming off a 10-6 and six season where Ryan Fitzpatrick threw 31 touchdowns. The Jets also, in Week 2, went off against Buffalo and Ryan Fitzpatrick put up 38 points. So it's, it's not the same thing. The Jets are expected to be you know, a, a, the, one of the worst teams in football this year by, by all these analysts. And last Based year, they were Kelvin above Beach and Buffalo. I don't think the Jets expect to be that bad. I, I don't either. I'm just saying that... that I don't. I don't think Josh McCown. If, if the Josh McCown starting and the Jets go zero and three, they're putting Christian Hackenberger, Bryce Petty in there. Anyways, the other question is because uh, it's clear that you're going to pile up all these losses here, and you don't need to go p- position by position if you're just going to say it's just you can go through and say loss because we, we have a show to do. But I want you to say are, are these losses are, are these losses um, you know highly contested? Young players playing well, um, or are they are they just complete blowdowns? So just just keep keep going through, but uh, just keep in mind we got to get to the callers soon. Okay, to note. I think young players will play well. We just don't have a quarterback, and we don't have a capable coach. That's the bottom line, and that's what wins games in the NFL. That's the bottom line. Until we can get at least one of those, we're pretty much screwed. All right, so Patriots, not even going to break it down. We only have a better offensive line than them. That's about it. Um, So that's a loss. The Dolphins, I already broke it down. That's a loss. It's in Miami. The Falcons, God, please, Julio Jones, please. I'm going to draft him in fantasy. Ben, just letting you know, just for that specific week. Bills broke it down. That's a Thursday night game, colorblind game. Um, I don't know. Those all white face masks, they're pretty hot. I'll say the Jets win well, that the, game. The, the, Jets the, Jets. the Jets are where they're all green. So. I'll say the Jets win that game. I say, uh, I, f- I feel we, we can win that game. Yeah, I, I, just, I feel like that's just one of those games I'm getting a feeling for, uh, coming off an embarrassing <laughs> loss to Atlanta. What, what type of feeling, Kyle? Uh, a strong one. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. All right, keep going. So, uh, <laughs> damn it, Ben. <laughs> you can't do that to me. Uh, so what am I at right now? Uh, three and three and six. Yeah. Uh, then we go to Tampa. I'll be at that game. Hopefully, I can meet up with somebody special there. Uh, get to meet some of the crew minus one. Um, they just have a much better team than us. Um, I'm an you know, drive out to that game, maybe fly. I don't know yet. Um, you know, spend like a thousand bucks on the hotel, the tickets, the food, etc., just to see Jameis Winston. Just like carve us up. And then we have a buy, much needed buy. Then the Panthers. I think Cam Newton has a good year this year. Cam Newton was slept on last year. He needs to regain that stature. I think he will. The Chiefs lost. The Broncos. That could be a win. In mile high. Um, I do not think highly of Trevor Simeon. Or Paxton Lynch, I could actually see Chad Kelly like starting for the Broncos that game. Like I can honestly see that. Uh, I don't think their defense is what it used to be. I'll say that's one of those miracle games. I'll go and say that's a miracle game. It's a strange time for the Jets. They usually don't do well on the West Coast. Let's say they break it Week 14. So what do I have? Is that four and ten? Uh, then we're at the Saints. That's that's literally a coin flip game, but it's Drew Brees. He's just so clutch. I'll say that's a loss. Uh, four and eleven Chargers. Um, you know they're always hit with injuries, but right now on paper they're a better team than us. That's a loss, and then the Patriots. That's a loss. So uh, four and twelve. Four and twelve. All right. Well, you heard it there, Kyle and I. We'll we'll come back to talking about that. Could, that could, no, I just want to put this out there. I know that was really pessimistic, and I know that's really depressing. And that well, we, we balanced it out because I went super optimistic and you went super pessimistic. Yeah, but so. at the end of the day, like that Saints game, like there could be an injury. You don't know that Chargers game could I'll be an injury. This. I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Um, what Kyle and I said, what Kyle, what Kyle said, and what I said, most likely won't be true. It'll be somewhere in the middle of, of what yeah, we said. Probably. I, I yeah. but I do I still do think that the Jets will be better than they were last year. I, I think this is a, a, a six to eight win team, you know, maybe five to eight win team, but it's gonna be a young team. Role players are gonna take the next step. It'll start to build the foundation. We have eighty million in next year. And the, I I do believe in Mike McCagnan. Give another chance at the draft. I, ju- I just I I think you're going to start to see guys like I mentioned, like Jordan Jenkins and Daryl Roberts and Justin Burris and Sharon Peak Elijah. That would be Bar- great. These these guys starting to take the next step, you know, just starting to build that that core, something something to get excited about, um, and then you know just these role players that are going to start into starting positions, guys like Quincy Nunwa and and Blau Powell taking the next steps into into leading the team. I, I don't know, I'm I'm just 
I'm actually I'm I'm very excited for this team. Um, although I know the Jets Baby probably staff. won't make the team. That's what we're taking right now. Well, hey. although I know the Jets probably won't make the playoffs, it's going to be fun to watch Christian Hackenberg play. It's going to be fun to watch these young guys play. See them I'm develop excited to watch. Year. I'm excited to watch these. Yeah, it's like it's like but watching a train wreck. You don't know. I'm kidding. Yeah. It's, it's, it'll just it'll be fun it's to like, see all these young guys out there. It's like Amy Schumer's career. Like you're okay. here for it. It's okay. entertaining. All right. But all right, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even. Like, you said that like I was about to like offend somebody. I, I Kyle, I never know with you. You're just it's a dog Amy chasing Schumer. Cars. Who cares? Yeah. One day I'm gonna get hit, but for now I'm just gonna keep barking. I can guarantee you that. All right. <laughs> Great segue to, there, Kyle. Yeah. All right, let's, to get, let's get to the phone lines. Uh, let's go with uh, we're gonna go with uh, Jay from NewYorkJetsFans uh, dot com. Uh, Jay, thank you so much for for joining us. Uh, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. We uh, Kevin and I were heading back from the lake. We hit insane traffic and we turned our car around and came back to the lake. So we're uh, <laughs> going to lake. Said, doing a little steak dinner here. And uh, checking out the view of the lake, and we're going to go out tonight and try and make the best of it. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow in uh, in Jersey. What's going on over there, guys? I hear, uh, you know, Kyle's gotten me all depressed. I just, you know, I called in and I, I called. Oh, I'm always uh, depressed. I'll give you 13 reasons right now. That, that depressing season breakdown. I hope it doesn't turn out like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know how Kyle has us losing at home in Jacksonville, but winning in Denver. It makes no sense, but I'm, yeah, I'm fine I with know. It. No, I... I, I I had a speeding Jacksonville. You said it'd be a miracle. I like. I nope. don't know, Kyle. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's still a win. Okay. And you also oh, have us losing like to the Saints and Chargers. I just. I don't know. I just. Jay. I mean, you missed mine. Mine was a little. Mine was a little optimistic. I, I definitely gave the breakdown. But I was just saying. I mean, it's not too far out of the realm of possibility that this Jets defense is young. That that it could perform. It's it's also not out of the realm of possibility that guys. You know, a lot of these young role players. Like you know, Dion Simon, Sharon Peak, Justin Burris, Simon says, Julian, oh, sure. Julian Paris, uh, Julian Stanford, uh, Dylan Donahue. Some of those guys in the defense take the next step. And same thing on the offense. I'm just saying, I think this season will be a fun one to watch, even though the Jets might lose some games. I think they'll be, you know, in in a lot of games, it'll be closely contested. I think you'll see young guys take the next step. Um, but Jay, uh, let's 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 talk about um, some stuff. Kyle and I were talking about this, and, and Kyle, I just getting a sense off of what your your breakdown of the Jets and versus other teams. You don't think too highly of this defense, Kyle. But Jay, um, and true. I guess I'll ask Kyle this after Jay, but Jay, where, you know, at the end of the season, I guess we're cl- getting close to training camp, and you, we, we obviously haven't seen this defense. Um, but if you had to rank where this defense, where you think this defense will end up at the end of the year, as far in terms of the rest of the NFL, overall defensive, you know, I know, I know you're not a big, you know, you want to rank them before the training camp or whatever, but if you had to guess, you know, do you think this is a top 10 defense, a top 15 defense, you know, a, a, you know, bottom five defense, what type of defense do you think this is? Because I mean, looking at it, the offense has a lot more question marks than the defense. I actually think the defense, although they underperformed last year, three pro, pro bowlers in that defensive line, a lot of young guys in the linebacking core, um, and a lot of some exciting safeties and some young guys in the corner. So just how how do you think this Jets defense uh, will will turn out at the end of the uh, year? Well, it just, I mean, it's hard to predict right now. It just depends on how a lot of these young guys develop. I mean, all the young guys you mentioned, the Burris and Simon and, and Donahue and guys like that, you know, Jenkins and, Mauled, it's so young, you just don't have any clue. I mean, this is the first year going in. You, you really can't predict much of anything, I don't think, until you see how these guys develop, how they take to the new coaching staff, yep. um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So um, I, potential is there to be a good defense. I just think that, you know, to, to, to proclaim right now that they're going to be awful, I think, is kind of ridiculous. And to proclaim right now that they're going to be a top five defense is probably also ridiculous. It's just – you know, you're going to hope for the best. I mean, there are pieces in place for sure. There's, you know, we got a, we got a really good defensive line, obviously. We have, um, you know, the makings of a really good, um, you know, pair of safeties. And, and you know, if, if uh, Claiborne can stay healthy and, you know, you can get the next step from guys like, uh, you know, Daryl Roberts or, you know, any of those guys that, that are back there and those young, you know, cornerbacks, I think that the defense could definitely be good. And they probably will be good, you know, in, in future years. It's just a matter of how quickly they develop and, you know, like I said, how well they take to, you know, all the new coaching and everything. No, exa- exactly. And, and Kyle, I mean, that was that was the point I'm trying to make for Kyle. Is, I mean, this team, I, I don't know if you can necessarily say, I mean, look, when, when you have a lot of unproven commodities, it's easy to say this team is terrible. I, I You can't go that far yet. I think it's just we don't know what this team is. Um, but, 
you know, talking to Kelvin last night. That's why um, I'm basing it off the paper. Well, that's hold on there. why I'm doing that. Well, if you, I mean, I'm just saying, talking to Kelvin last night, I mean, if all the guys in that locker room, and, and we're posting this, you know, as soon as, as this wraps, so, I mean, our listeners will hear it, you know, tonight, Thank Thursday night. Us. I mean, if if all the guys in the locker room have the same, I, I um, you know, type of energy or, or think about the, this season the way Kelvin does, I think this team will go far. Um, you know, I just, or, and when I say far, you know, do I think the Jets are going to go to the playoffs? Probably not. Nope. You know, who knows? I'm just saying, I, but, I don't, I don't think this is a, you can't count them out yet because the, the point that Kelvin was basically making is, is look, you can talk all about the media, but once, I mean, once you're out there week one versus Buffalo, everything changes. You're a, you're a right. football team. You're, you're, it's weak. It's just, you know, uh, a center snapping the ball to a quarterback and whoever wins those games is going to win. So I just think it's just, you know, I think if the guy's saying that the Jets are going to be the number one overall t- pick, I think it's just ridiculous. I think there's a lot of question marks, but they're young, exciting question marks. Some of them won't pan out, but I think some of them will. Right. Well, I mean, I can tell you, I, I, I didn't hear, you know, I'm, I don't know if you posted the interview with Kelvin yet, or, you know, I obviously haven't heard we, it. We but, posted it tonight. Um, we posted it tonight. We're piecing these together. Well, I'll, I'll check it out. But, but um, I'll tell you this from talking to guys like, you know, the, the guys who I do have contact with, like, you know, Quincy and, and Malden and, you know, even like if you saw some of the interviews we did at Mo Wilkerson bowling event, all those guys, they'll all tell you to a man, you know, and I, I look, they're not going to say we're going to stink, you know, like, I mean, I, but, but they all seem very confident in the fact that they like the guys who were in the locker room. They, they think that there's a much more, um, you know, uh, uh, family environment going on right now, um, you know, within, inside the locker room. I mean, it's, it's, there's not as much fighting and all that stuff. You're saying number 15 um, you know, is gone. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that. I mean, there were all kinds of issues that were going on in that locker room last year that, um, you know, I guess there, there's been more, you know, a, a bigger emphasis on, like, team bonding and everything in the off season. You know, you should have seen just at Moe's event, Compared to last year, um, how many players showed up? I mean, it was crazy. They, like almost, almost like the entire team was there. So um, they've been hanging out. You know, you see a lot of like, um, you know, a lot of things on Instagram and Twitter and everything of like guys going to concerts to get in that. You know, obviously that, that the concert that uh, Leo and Darren was at, it, but it was good that Leo was there, right? I mean, you know, imagine if if it was just Darren and his girlfriend there. Like, we you know, what could have possibly happened? I mean, you know, you don't want to speculate or anything, but it was good that. that one of his teammates was there to get his back and everything and break it up. And, you know, and, and um, you know, but if you see, like, the guys are golfing together, they're fishing together, and it's just, you know, it, it's nice to see that because I don't think that there was too much of that going on last year. And, and um, you know, when you have that kind of bond between each other, I think that, you know, guys stay later with each other at practices. They, you know, they, they work out after practice. You know, they, they, uh, they'll, they, they have each other's back um, on the field and off the field. And I think that that goes a long way for sure. So. Um, you know, I, 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 no, yeah. I definitely like that. And, and you know, and, and I like what the guys are saying this offseason, um, you know, as far as, you know, how they think, uh, you know, they're going to perform. I, I think that they all are confident. They're all pros. I mean, we're not talking about a bunch of college guys going against pros. It's, it's well, pros against pros. You know, the talent level is, um, you know, typically in the NFL, the difference between a last place team and a first place team talent wise. Um, yeah, there's, there's a difference, you know, for sure. But like, I think that, like, you know, you can squeeze wins like you saw in 2013 out of a team that may not be all that talented by, you know, bonding and, and coming together. And, uh, you know, I, they went 8-8 eight and eight that year with a team that probably had about 2-14 and 14 talent. So could that happen this year? Of course. I mean, it's just a matter of going out there and doing it. Yeah, and Jay, I think I think one of the, the points you made there about about the team bonding. I mean, that was part of the reason the 2015 team was so special. I mean, you had guys, you know, Eric Decker jumping on Ryan Fitzpatrick's back uh, during interviews and and whatnot. I mean, I, I just think uh, and 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 definitely last year that was lacking. I mean, obviously some of the, the losing brings that out, but I think I think it is a it is a good thing that it's a lot of young guys. I think it, you know a young team it just changes the environment. I think there's more energy. Um, a lot of these guys are, you know, excited to be in the NFL, excited to play. They're going to give it their all. I mean, it looks like the Jets, I mean, let's be honest here, it looks like the Jets quit in some of those games last year. It looked like they quit in that doll, you know, and, you know, I can't make that observation sitting, you know, from, from my couch. But just from what I saw, I mean, you saw some of those veterans out there, you know, that New England game in New England, that, that the home versus Miami. Happened to drop a touchdown. Yeah. The, there were some things there that were where it looked like some veterans, you know, Definitely, uh, definitely. You know, maybe could have pushed more. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, call out anybody because honestly, we don't know. We don't know. But I just think I think 
when you have a younger environment, uh, that chemistry is there. I think the Jets will surprise a lot of people this year. Now, Jay, do you agree with yeah. the statement? And that's and this is you know the article I'll you know I'll probably release will tomorrow I'll, I'll release it tomorrow is you know mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. laying out why the Jets are going to be better. On, it's on your site. What am I doing? It, it's on your site. It, it's going to be you know <laughs> why why the Jets are going to be better this year than they were last year. Not just in record, but a better team overall. Uh, do you agree with that statement though about the record that the Jets will finish with more than five wins? Um, this this year, not sure about the wins, but I do think they'll be a better team. You know, I think that, that it's possible to be a better team, but not have more wins. Um, I, you know, it's hard for me to predict how many wins they're going to come up with, but I will say this: instead of you know, like what you were just saying, guys like Revis out there loafing it or you know not giving full effort, you know, there's going to be a much faster, younger, hungrier team out there this year, and that's going to that, that can stronger, only greener. If, yeah, exactly. Well, hungrier. They should just cover. They should just drop the greener. Cause I don't even understand what that means. But um, <laughs> go with hungry. Vomit. At- yeah, green giant. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Sheldon with his greens. But um, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a of, uh, you know, strike that from the record. I'm take Jay that. from the top <laughs> rope. <All right. laughs> Guys, listen, I, I, I would love to stay on Talk Football with you guys all night. I, I unfortunately have to cut this short because I have to go in and help out with something inside the house here. But um, I'll be tuned in. I'm definitely prime looking time. out for that public YouTube trouble. interview. Yeah, well, I'm not in trouble. I just uh, – I just, I, I, long story, and I don't want to get into it on the air, but i got to help out with something inside the house here. So let me, uh, let me run. But I gotta, I, I'll talk to you guys uh, next week, and I'll definitely look out for your interview. And I'm looking forward to that article, uh, Ben, so I'll, I'll have that post up tomorrow. All right, sweet, Jay. Thank you, thank you for uh, calling in. Hope everything's all right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, everything's good. I don't think I got a question or, like, actual, like, word of non-sarcasm in there. <laughs> I'm going to well, be honest. You know, uh, we don't know what happened, but... I was going to say, like, because uh, my response to the whole, like, family thing, that's great and all, but, like, you can be a family all you want. If management is setting you up to fail like they clearly are... I don't agree with that, Kyle. I don't think you can make that statement. You don't get rid of your best wide receiver to quote-unquote save cap when you have enough cap space. That's not why they got rid of him, Kyle. You're missing the mark. The reason they got rid of him, and although you can defend it or not, the reason they got rid of him is they saw the talent on the wide receiver core. They saw guys like Ardarius Stewart, Chad Hansen, Sharon Peak, and and whoever... None of them are Eric Decker. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, Kyle, they're not Eric Decker. Kyle, they're not Eric Decker because they didn't have the chance. You can't make that statement. Oh my what they God. did is they're cutting Eric Decker to give these guys the reps they need. They know. Do you want probably, to develop Christian Hackenberg because he needs. Do you want to develop these young quarterbacks? Needs- Kyle, okay, Kyle, is, is, it, is it that hard to believe that the Jets saw the talent on the wide receiver and they saw the talent in the quarterback room? I feel said, like they, and they saw hold on, more Kyle, in the quarterback Kyle, room. Kyle, I'll, I'll give you a chance to answer. And they saw um, that, that the talent in the wide receiver room was probably higher. So let's, let's let go of Eric Decker. Yeah. Give these young guys the chance, the reps, the opportunity. Let's see who's for real. Let's give them the reps. Let's give them the chance to grow and shine. And then when the Jets are a contender, when the Jets, you know, in a few years, maybe next year, maybe the year after that, already yes. these guys will be starters for two, three years. They'll be the foundation of the team. Eric Decker, his window's closed to be good on the Jets. I mean, all he would serve would be Christian Hackenberg's safety valve, and you can argue the merits of that. Which is something You could argue the merits of that, but the point is is that Eric Decker was not going to be on the team when the Jets were good. We need guys like Sharon Peake. We need guys like Ardarius Stewart. We need guys like Chad Hansen to be at the top of their game when the Jets are heading into New England in 2020, 2019, and you know, playoffs on the line. We need those guys. Eric That's Decker is going to be 30-something years old. We don't need that. This is a young team. We're building around the young guys. The only reason Matt Forte isn't gone, and believe me, he would be, the only reason he's not gone is because the Jets would actually lose money by cutting him. So th- that's the only reason he's there. He's the only veteran there that's staying, and, and you could argue Steve McClendon as well. Um, and McClendon's there, just there as, as depth. But the Jets saw the, the he's wide the receiver depth. Uh, yeah, but I think, so it's I, not I, 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 I'll say this. I'll say this. Deion Simon will replace him by the end of the year. Um, look, Unlikely. Just, Steve McClendon's oh. a good player. Like, a good player. Deion Simon's a good young player. But so that's the point, Kyle. What does a good player get us? What does a good 31-year-old player get us? Not much. Just like winning nothing. games. I'd it rather put in nothing. the good young player and try to get him into a good player. Like, it's just, uh, uh, that's, all, that's all the Jets are doing here, Kyle. You can make the argument they're tanking, but they're really okay. not. They're putting the Jets in the best position to succeed, um, and, and not just for the future, but now I, I honestly think that the Jets are better off um, in their wide receiver room, giving guys like Sharon Peake, Chad Hansen, uh, and Ardarius Stewart better uh, than Eric Decker. Now, the only thing, the only reason I would say that the Jets maybe should have kept Eric Decker was just for the development of Christian Hackenberg. 
Yeah, but I think the Jets saw absolutely nothing in Hackenberg and Petty. That's why they brought in McCown. Well, then, That's Kyle, wouldn't that, ex- Kyle, wouldn't that explain... Yeah, wouldn't that explain that they're saying... Uh, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, wouldn't you agree that they, they looked at the talent in the wide receiver room, they looked at the talent in the quarterback room, and they said, one of these guys is going to benefit, and one of these guys is going to not benefit from Eric Decker being here. We see more talent in the wide receiver room. Let's let those guys benefit. Let's get, let let's you know nurture those guys. Let those guys you know grow and learn and get better and be, become pros and get all those reps. And then the quarterback will figure out either. And, and here's, here's so what's going to happen to Christian Hackenberg? I'll say this: I actually don't think these guys are as bad as as Kyle. I mean, you saw Week 17 when the Jets trotted out Sharon Peak. Um, uh, uh, give me a chance. Here. Robbie Anderson, Quincy New. None of them are there. even close to Eric Decker. Like I, not one. right now, right now, Kyle, right now. But you're telling they me Quincy Nunez. You're year. telling me Quincy Nunez. Maybe not. But you're telling me Quincy Nunez in two years won't be as good as a receiver as Eric Decker will be. I, 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 I you can't I make that statement that. yet. You don't know. You wouldn't have seen Robbie Anderson at this time last year becoming the starting wide receiver for the team by the end of the year. I'm just saying there's a lot of unknowns. All I'm saying is the Jets have five young talented wide receivers, probably six because, and that was the next question I was going to ask you. And we'll, we'll get into that in a second with our next caller. Uh, probably six young wide receivers. They're going to give them the chance to succeed, um, and and you know. So, give them so the you're, chance you're admitting Josh McCown is going to start? No, because they will not succeed. No, give them the chance to succeed. Will Christian Hackenberg will start.
the future, Justin. In the future, right Quincy Enumwa is going to be just as good as Eric Def- Decker, if not better. Right now, it's easily Eric Decker. As a number one? Yeah. Oh, I'll give you better receiver right now is probably... Quincy but here's the other thing. still drops here's balls. The, oh, wait, here's the, here's the thing we're not even considering the argument, is that Eric Decker is coming off two major surgeries on his hip and yep. his shoulder. And he seems like, to be good to go. Like he was working out. He they seems to be good to go. Out. Kyle, he hasn't played it down. I mean, oh, he wow. Go, he could would be curl gone him. next year anyway. And would be gone next year anyway. Yeah, Justin, Kyle, I mean, all, all, all you're doing... Like all you're doing... talking when we're talking, dude. Kyle, like we Kyle, can't hear Kyle, you. Kyle, calm... Dude, calm yourself. Justin, just, Justin, what were we saying? Yeah, he, it doesn't matter because he'd be gone next year anyway. So, as I said, what's the point of keeping him? So, I'm glad we got rid of him. I mean, you're I, glad I, that we got absolutely nothing for the best receiver on the team who could I only help the development of Christian Hackenberg. We have guys behind him. I, I think Kyle, you said it yourself. You that we Kyle, don't know what they are. Kyle, Bob you said it yourself. Sharon Peak, Darius Stewart, which I like what he's got, but I mean. I don't know why we're crying that, over Decker. He, he had, had a groin injury. Great year. That's all he had. Ardair, Decker had Kyle, great did you just year. really compare? Kyle, did you really just compare uh, Ardair Stewart's summer groin injury to Eric Decker's two major surgeries that caused him to the entire year? Groin injuries can definitely affect you. Like honestly. Oh my God, Kyle, a a an injury suffered that will cost him a few weeks uh, that he suffered in May is not the same as an injury that Eric Decker suffered in September and took him the entire basically the entire year to recover from. Let's let's that's a new point. That's I mean, those dumb. injuries seem just tend to linger Justin, though. So Justin, you yeah, are agreeing. Exactly. You are agreeing with the fact that by I mean, do you agree with the statement that um, by keeping Eric Decker, you are benefiting the quarterbacks, the young quarterbacks, but hurting the young wide receivers. Um, but mm-hmm. by cutting by cutting Eric Decker, you're benefiting the young wide receivers and hurting the quarterbacks. Do you agree with that statement? Mm, I mean, if we want to see if Hackenberg can be the franchise guy, I think that it would have helped a little bit if we had Decker being a veteran. But do I think it's hurting his uh, young quarterbacks' progress? No, because I think these other guys that we have are capable of doing what Decker has done in the past. So no. And oh, well, I, I mean, Kyle, your your thoughts? All right, because I, I agree with that, and I'm just saying I think the Jets. Although I've gone back and forth on this, and it would have been nice for Christian Ackerberg to have that. I think the Jets made the better call that these wide receivers and, are more talented than the young yeah, quarterbacks. and I th- I think it's them. better because we can utilize. The, the tight end more, which I think we're going to do with this offense, and we don't we don't have to even go to Decker. We can just use the tight end and use these young receivers. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm glad we got rid of Decker, to be honest with you. So, I don't, I don't I see everyone's point with Decker, but he's not going to be here anyway next year, so there was no point in keeping him. So, why why not keep him, though? Why not just help him? Why not? Because he's, he's gone next year. year. He's gone next year. He's gone next year, so... Doesn't so matter. keep him around he's for this done. year. We have the cap space for him. He's on the roster. Keep oh, the cap for Christian Hackenberg. Cap space is regardless. No thanks. Because just uh-huh. it's about the formula, uh, freaking building with these young receivers, building chemistry. And if he why build when he's not going to be around for next year? When you can get these other guys young reps. That's what this year is about. Do you want to develop Christian Hackenberg, or do you want to develop these wide receivers? Give me one, because can, you, can, can, you can't have can both. You, Christian yeah, you we cannot can, have uh, both. ASJ, I'm letting you know, you cannot have both George, right now. We're, we're going to develop Christian Hackenberg. All right, so why not keep Eric Decker? Why not? Because he doesn't fit future plans. Simple answer. Okay, so you care more about developing future wide receivers and future talent. So you're going to start Josh McCown. Josh McCown is not starting. If, unless he looks way better than these other quarterbacks, Josh McCown shouldn't be starting, absolutely not. All right, I'm going to lay out the scenarios for you. If we kept Eric Decker and we used him to help develop Christian Hackenberg, that's one scenario. Obviously, it hasn't hey, uh, happened. Why are we even discussing Eric Decker? He's gone. Let's just talk about guys that are currently on the roster. That's a good point. I'm not going to argue with that point. I mean, but it, it is kind of a mute point. That was a good response. But if you wanted to <laughs> if shut you wanted, him down. It, that was a good point. I've never heard him come up with a good point before. It kind of caught me off guard. All right. If you if you wanted to develop your quarterback, you would keep the best pass catcher, the best route runner on the team, a veteran right. who will much Let's, easy, a okay, veteran I do, I do, who will quickly pick up point. a brand guess, new, guess, 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 difficult guess, guess. offense. No, Ben, let me make point, my point. Again, simple answer: it doesn't fit future plans. 
Okay, so you care more about developing other wide receivers. Future plans. So Christian Hackenberg, a very inaccurate rookie quarterback, you're throwing uh, him into fall, the fire. Fall, you're saying that's going to be good. You're, right, you're telling right, me right. he's not a rookie quarterback and he's not getting thrown into the fire and he's not inaccurate? You're saying that's wrong because they're I mean, all the, the plan, truth. The plan all along was not to play him in the first year. If you're not ready by the second year, you should have That's because be Shan Gailey was going to leave. They didn't want him to learn a new offense. So this, is, as long as that's true, we don't know if it's true, but I'm going to have to go off what Todd Bowles is telling us, saying they knew about it the whole year. That tells me he only learned very, very simple things about an NFL offense last year that he has learned very little overall because they didn't want him learning a brand new offense just to rip it out of his hands like three months later or whatever later. So this is a brand new offense for Christian Hackenberg. Aduda has very little exposure in the NFL, almost no exposure to an NFL field, did poorly in preseason. You're going to throw him into a fire with a difficult yeah. schedule, and it's going to hurt the wide receivers because wait, he's wait, going wait, to be wait, struggling. Wait, wait, wait. Slow down, slow down there. Difficult schedule? Didn't I hear this nonsense from you guys last year? Difficult schedule? The schedule it was, is... It was a difficult wait, schedule. Wait, we went 5 and 11. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, just, not with this difficult uh, schedule stuff because the schedule doesn't matter regardless. The schedule doesn't matter. I feel like matter. it does. I feel like it does. No, it doesn't. Absolutely that kind not. Of the, that kind of like separates wins and losses, usually. That's just my take on it. It's just my jet take, but stop with that. All right, guys, <laughs> let's 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 uh, let's move on here. Uh, we're gonna do some. We're gonna talk about the position battles uh, going into training camp. I know we have another week until training camp. We have another episode before training camp starts, uh, and so what, what Kyle and I will talk about this. We might ask. Well, no, we're not. We're just gonna stick with Justin here. Uh, we're gonna go around a uh, given position. I have. Uh, let me count this. I think I have ten. Ten position battles. Um, for, um, that's going to have, well, I guess 10, 10 slash 11, you'll, you'll see in a second. Um, we're heading into Wait, training what? camp, you'll, you'll see why. Uh, about who's going to start. No, basically. I wasn't paying attention. Like, what's the question? Uh, Kyle, uh, basically, I have, I have 10, um, 10 position battles that's going to be happening uh, during training camp, uh, and we're going to give our prediction on who's going to end up winning them uh, before training camp. We'll review these um, after training camp. Um, okay. So, let's, let's start it off. We're going to start with Right now, the Jets are carrying five wide receivers. Um, now, it is possible, so this could be your answer, that the Jets I will only carry... I think they're going to keep six. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, Thank you, Justin. But, uh, let me, let me discuss go, them. Raven. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, now, your answer could be that they could only keep five. But if the Jets keep six, who is the sixth wide receiver going to be? Uh, you could go, I mean, Jalen Marshall, but he's suspended for the first four games. Yeah, I think they're going to uh, keep five Devin and Street, then Marshall. Get, you gotta Thank let you. them get the question off, man. Seven Street, the off. Gabe Marks, Katie Cannon, Marquise Wilson, uh, Frankie Hammond, um, Deshaun Fox, um, just to name a few of them. So I guess I'll ask you, Justin, um, who do you think just will be the, the sixth wide football. receiver? And and let's let's remember here is that I mean my prediction for this is, and I'll and I'll give my my guy in a second. But I think it's going to be another guy like a Robbie Anderson last year, and un, one of these one of these guys I just mentioned, maybe another one yeah. that'll that'll really shine during preseason, and he'll be the sixth guy we keep. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is how do they impact on special teams? Can they contribute? Um, so I mean, could that could lead to the Jets carrying seven? So who knows? Um, but I guess I'll ask you, Justin, um, how many receivers are the Jets going to carry, and who are they going to? Who are the last two or one or two going to be? Uh. I'm gonna say six, but I, I don't know who I don't know who the other one's gonna be right now because I think Jalen Marshall is could be a surprise cut if he doesn't perform during training camp. Right now, I'm leaning towards they're gonna keep him, but depending on how training camp goes, so yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling. It's five, five, six, or seven right now. It really depends how training camp goes. Chad Hansen, Stewart, that's two. Robbie, Peak. And Quincy, that's five right there. And I, I think they may keep one more besides that, one or two. It depends. It all depends on training camp. Special teams is where the guys are going to make the make the cut. All right. Well, I mean, so I guess we're going to say, I mean, well, the thing you have to remember with Jalen Marshall, and I messed this up uh, on, on another show Yeah. <laughs> on, on, a few days ago. Wait, oh, are we talking about the same topic? Oh, yeah, four, four. oh, that's no, the problem. No, 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 no not the, the same topic. Not the same topic. Uh, I, oh. I said that Jalen Marshall was spent for two games. It was four games yeah. on, on the Suck yeah. Jets, but it's actually four. So you have to remember that even if he does, if the Jets do decide he played well enough during training camp um, and, and preseason, he still wouldn't be on the day one roster. 
So in that case, do the Jeff Carey A6. That's a guy who they, they might cut. Um, or depending on who, how he plays, or do you think the Jets will go with five and carry another guy to a different position? Mm. It all depends on training camp breaks down. All right. That's where um, all right, well, then, Kyle, we'll get your take. Who will be the sixth or seventh or none uh, wide receiver on the Jets? I can repeat them for you if you need. We have Devin Street, uh, I got, I got Gabe him. Marks, KD Cannon, Marquis Willis. Yeah, you're, you're um, all right, so I'm going to go Quincy, Robbie, Ardari, Stewart. All right, all right we, we already know this. It's only about the right, Well, I'm doing it for me, Ben, so calm yourself, all right? I think like, I'm the guy who needs to calm himself. Yeah. You need just, like, let me Kyle, do my Kyle's thing. got the <laughs> shortest fuse of any person I've ever seen. Now, Ben, I mean, what do you expect? You pull my string, I'm going to talk. Um, all right, Quincy, Robbie. I've Ardarius got a Stewart. snake in my boot. I swear to God, if you interrupt me one more time, <laughs> I'm going to throw it. You said pull the string. Okay, whatever. Keep going. Oh, the Toy Story reference. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm absolved. Yeah, Quincy, Robbie. Ardarius Stewart, Chad Hansen, uh, Sharon Peak, Katie Cannon. I think that's it. Unless I'm forgetting somebody. So you're saying Katie Cannon's going to be your sixth and final receiver? Kate, Katie Cannon's extremely talented. So Don't do, you, know do you think he has the ability to return kicks? I think he has the ability to be a number one wide receiver. He just needs to put. I know on. that wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. I, and he, he got he got in trouble with the 49ers. That's he wasn't original. Yeah pretty big. Do you think he has the ability to return kicks? Because that's really what's going to separate them. Because, I mean, right now you could probably see the favorite because the Jets brought him in was Marquise Wilson. He's kind of replaced Quentin Patton. Marquise Wilson was a very solid receiver for the Bears um, and kind of, you know... Uh, I forgot we signed got, him. Got hurt. Yeah, so the, yeah, Jets, yeah, yeah. the Jets could have keep Marquise, Marquise Wilson and then keep another one based off the returning because I don't think Marquise Wilson can return kicks. I might be wrong on that. But I don't think... No, he, really his, no he has injury history. I think, believe it or not, you know, Six contract. Four, so yeah, I don't think I don't think it's happening. Contract year for Quincy. I think the Jets are going to use him the most possible. Make him earn his money. I see that you know a lot with management nowadays. Um, I can very well see Quincy Nuwa pulling off the number one wide receiver, definitely some H back into the offense and kick return. I can I definitely see no way no way they're putting Quincy back there, Kyle. I can see that. Uh, he con- did have one kick return last year. Um, I, it was it was for some messed up. It was I think it was against the Chiefs, and it was because uh, it was Marshall pretty good. Was fumbled. It was more yeah, and he returned it like fifty yards. But yeah. I I I uh, I think the Jets are going to struggle putting the number one receiver. It could happen. You're right. Um, but he's a yeah. he's he's like a restricted free agent next year, right? Yeah. Um, so sure. the the big the big the big three probably right now the probably the favorites would be Katie Cannon, Marquise Wilson, and then Deshaun Fox is a guy who really performed during minicamp. But again, that's minicamp. Um, if I had to make my pick right now, I'd probably say I would say that the Jets are going to keep both Marquise Wilson and Katie Cannon. And then I mean, I, we don't have a lot of other talent on the field, so why not keep those guys? Yeah, I could see the Jets keeping seven, but um, it's it's going to be one of them. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change. It. I think they're going to go Katie Cannon. I think I think it'll be it'll be very close between Wilson and Cannon, but I just think Cannon's younger. I think he's going to prove it. I, I actually like Marquise Wilson, and I could see him making the roster. But if I had to go right now, I'll say Katie Cannon. All right, the next the next one I have. Uh, a very exciting position, fullback. We have Anthony Frisker versus Julian Hauser. Um, Jess, we'll start with you. Hauser. Kyle? Fullback position? Yeah, it's Anthony Frisker versus Julian Hauser. Um, Goddamn Julian Hauser. He just can't seem to make the roster for Thanks, me. thanks for the explicit. I guess we're ben, you literally said shit like 30 minutes ago. So. <laughs> um... <laughs> Julian Hauser just never seems to do it. Like linebacker, defensive end. Now we're going to fullback. Give me Anthony Fisker. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take Fisker this as well. I just think I think he's more of a, a natural fullback. I think he has it. Um, yeah, and I think the Jets want to carry a guy like him. I think he's a better run blocker, which is big. I think he, the Jets are going to focus on the run game with Matt Forte, Law Powell, um, and Elijah McGuire. All right, the next one is uh, that's center. probably a pick returner, Elijah McGuire, probably. Well, that that's coming up later, but uh, we have. Well, mm-hmm. since we just talked about it. I guess we'll do it uh, now. This this is this is a open season topic. But who will be the kick returner um, slash punt returner um, for this, this part of the training camp? Uh, yeah, well, he's not on the team. Uh, so your kick returner. I mean, it, it, is it going to be that six guy? Uh, like Kyle, you mentioned Elijah McGuire. So Justin, who is who is your kick returner slash punt returner? Is it somebody different? Is the same guy? Um, Elijah McGuire. 
the rage in running back. All right, uh, Kyle, your uh, your pick for kick returner, Elijah. I'm gonna go rage in running back, Elijah McGuire. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I guess I'll go I guess I'll go Elijah right now, but I don't I don't know if he has the top end speed to do it as much. He's pretty um, fast. He's pretty, I, he's pretty fast. fast. He reminds me more, I guess. Oh God, I'm gonna mess up the name. Um, oh boy, it's uh, Chiefs first tech. I'm trying to remember the Chiefs running back. Um, Shadandrick West. Uh, Shadandrick West. No, no, hold on, hold on. It's, Spencer Ware. No, hold on, hold on. It, it's Jamal Charles. Niall Davis. That's who it was. He was on the team um, for, yeah. but he he returned he returned a 106 yard kickoff in the in the playoffs in 2015. Like. And that he, I mean, oh, he, yeah, kind of, he's, he uh, the Jets carried Nile Davis for I'm pretty sure a few games, but he's yeah. very similar to that, like that type of running. Hopefully, he's better. But so I, he, he may be in that situation, but he's not a he's not a top end speed, you know, gonna fly down up the middle. He's he's gonna be more of the you know shifty kind of, um, you know, get it done that way. So I guess right now I'll say Elijah, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's that six wide receiver, whether it's Katie Cannon, Deshaun Fox, whoever it is. Um, the next on the the docket, so we've done um, those three. We'll do Jonathan Harrison versus Wesley Johnson for the starting center position. Probably Wesley is the favorite right now, just because we've seen him more often. But Jonathan Harrison, a, a free agent signing. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't Jonathan Harrison's not. No, no. It, this is this is a realistic no, battle. Cut. Yes, no, it is. It's, Jonathan Harrison got. It. Yes, it is. It Jonathan is. Jonathan Harrison got cut in favor for Ryan Kelly. Then come on now. Let me let me let me fact check here. For the okay, well, while while I fact check this, while I yeah. fact check this, dude, if he, I got if, one for you. I got one. Well, no, but he's still on team. Oh. Kyle, the point is, the point is, is that he 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 will be. Um, he he. I mean, it'll at least be somewhat of a competition. I, I obviously no. the favorite is Wesley John. I have another one like this. I have another one like this where you're gonna be like. Well, obviously it's gonna be, but but no. I Jonathan Harrison was brought into. Jonathan was Harrison was brought in to be the center. Uh, Wesley Johnson is obviously the favorite, but who knows? I mean, we've only seen Wesley in a few games. Jonathan Harrison it's not out of it's not Dakota out of the Dozier. realm of possibility. Kyle, so you're saying it's out of the realm of possibility that Wesley Johnson could stink it up in the first few preseason game, and Jonathan Harrison's pretty, doing pretty well with the backups, and he wins it. Yeah. You're saying that's not no chance that ever happens. No chance. No chance. Jonathan Harrison. Is I was going to say Wesley Johnson as well. I'm just saying it's at least a somewhat of a competition. Um, I got I, it. I got it. Uh, you you have a question or an answer? I got I got a question. It's right. probably one of the ones I've already listed, but go ahead. Wow, man. Uh, Bur- Burris versus Daryl Roberts. Yeah, that that was yeah. Thank you. That was the that was the next one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was literally the next you one we were got, going to. You just got cocked. Back. Well, <laughs> well, no, it's just like all right. Um, yeah. Well, the next one was Morris Claiborne is then obviously number one. But I'm checking the doc right now to see if it actually was. Wait, it was the next one after Harrison versus Johnson. Um, who do you think will be the number two? It is right there. Who do you right think there. will be the number two? <laughs> who do you think will be the number two uh, corner? Uh, Justin Burris, Marcus Williams, or Daryl Roberts? Um, who's going to take that? Um, so I guess we'll start with Justin since he has all the questions and answers tonight. Justin, fire away. Uh, I'm leaning toward Daryl Roberts. I really like this kid. What this kid showed and the few snaps he had last year. No, I mean, the guy looked pretty good. But so I'm leaning toward Daryl Roberts right now, but I can see any of those three guys taking it. I think people are overlooking Marcus Williams. I think he looked better his first year. Didn't look so good last year, but neither did anybody. That. So I mean, I won't be surprised if Marcus Williams wins it either, or he, even Burris looked good at times. So if I want to say someone right now, I'm going to say Daryl Roberts. But I won't be surprised if any of those three guys won the second cornerback spot. My take is Justin Burris uh, is number two. Um, Mark, uh, coin flip between Daryl Roberts and Marcus Williams. Uh, been watching the Jets games from last year over again because I have no life. And uh, Marcus Williams actually did fairly well. You could tell he was definitely held back by injuries last year. But um, Daryl Roberts played very limited snaps, so I would like to see him at a much larger scale. But there is stuff to like. He's a well-coached individual. He obviously has talent. Um, so that's just going to be, you know, one of those visions that plays out in training camp. But mm-hmm. if I if I had to place my early bet, I would say Marcus Williams ends up being our third corner. So you're going to say, wait, Kyle, are you saying screens playing outside then? I don't because I don't because know. this was the I was saying screens going to go in the nickel. I I think I think Bowles has learned his lesson hopefully, and I think he's going to put. 
I think he's going to keep Did you see what Kyle from AFC's Bros, you know, was putting out today? He was doing, like, some film breakdown. Screen gets toasted in the slot. Yeah. Uh, oh, in the slot? Yeah. I mean, but he... I don't I don't know it necessarily... But I mean, and I know he's you a can find, tackler. I know you can find... So where, where would you play him? Do you just not? I mean, like, are you just keeping him on the bench there? I, I mean, I, you could make the argument... Definitely should have been a veteran cut. Do you think? Do you think? I mean, he, hey guys, he still could be. Do you think that Bur- Kyle? I want to get your take on this, just because you seem very anti. Do you think Burris, Williams, and Roberts, through all their limited play time, are all better than Screen? GM and me says yes because money. Um, How much money do we get from cutting Screen? I'll I'll go check that out. Because I mean, it could it could have been a better. I mean, who who knows? The Jets are gonna put, hopefully will put the best guys out there. Anyways, my answer to this was gonna be Burris, but I do really like Williams and Roberts. I'm actually excited about these three young guys. I think Claiborne's a very solid addition. The only guy I'm not, you know, screen. I'm I'm a little worried about, but in 2015 he did do very well in the slot, um, and and he was a very well did very well in the slot for for Cleveland. Um, well, the next one I'll let you guys. You guys, I'm gonna give you guys the open mic. Wait, no, no, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm. Doing the calculator thing here, so calm yourself. Gotta gotta give me some time. This over the cap is one of the glitchiest websites in the world. No, it is the money wouldn't have matter between. Well, I mean, I think he's still going to be on the team right now. I think the Jets have a lot to enough money. Um, Kyle, do you got that answer? Oh yeah, now you know what it feels like, Ben, to have a dog during the show. Yeah, okay. uh, I, have to, I have to go out the dog. Yeah, his dog's suicidal, so he's got to go check no, on it. No, she needs to go. Right, she's got to go to the bathroom. The one, Kyle, you can read the one after this, and you guys can yell at each other. For, I'll be back yeah, in right. 30 seconds. So let me, I'm just finding it. It's, oh, all right, he's number two. I probably should have saw that. All right, so he is a post-June 1st cut. Um, we gain $3.5 million and we lose $5 million for this year. But let's see what it does like for next year. N- uh, okay, so this year, like as of, as of right now, according to OverTheCap.com, we have $24 million do- uh, in cap space. And next year, we have $66 million in cap space. So if we cut Buster Screen, we gain $3 million this year, $27 million. That's what we would have in cap space. But $74 million in 2018... So we gain like eight million if we yeah, cut Buster Screen next year, definitely. And with Buster, or and with Daryl Roberts and Marcus Williams and Justin Burris showing good things, you know, at the end of training camp, I would not be surprised if Buster Screen is one of those cuts. Uh, could be a surprise. Cut. Go ahead. Could be a surprise cut. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, next one. Oh God. Really, Ben? All right, this is what he left me. Uh, Petty versus McCown versus Hackenberg. Uh, this, you know my take on this. Uh, I think Petty's the better talent. I think McCown's better for the young talent on the team. So. Yeah, I think it's either H- Hackenberg or Petty. Anything right. close, at least. I'm just hoping it's not Josh McCown. It will be, just letting you know. All right, we'll move on to the next one because we honestly do not want to argue anymore. It sounds like Justin's defeated. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Um, By the Stuart, way, my Hackenberg jersey order today, so. This is why America. America just throwing away money. Ben, did you hear that? I know you just clicked on. <laughs> I just came back and I just hear, this is why America's throwing away money. Um, yeah. He goes, I just ordered my Christian Hackenberg jersey, by the way. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Come on. This is Justin. Come on. Hey, can I the guy for supporting his team? Um, so did you we talk buy, about? You should buy a uh, chance of sixty nine shirt then. You want to support the team? No, nah, I'm alright. <laughs> Kyle, Justin, you, you should have just you should have just said okay and then just not done it because Kyle's not just blacklisted you. It's yep. alright. He'll be buying his at the end of the year anyway. When but potentially this. I don't buy course. jerseys. If you're a true Jet Take fan, you know that because one, I'm not gonna have another man's name on my back. Way too much pride. Uh, two, they're what? done. In, yeah, they're done in like five years usually. It's like literally not worth it. Just get T-shirts. That's what I do. I have like 18 T-shirts. Do the, the, the same thing. Do the same price. Wait a minute. Uh, you can find no. price. Uh, yeah, the t-shirts are like. No. I'm, I'm buying a Jamal Adams like white long sleeve t-shirt. It's just the Jets logo on the front, and then the back is just his Adams in 33. Yeah. Um, I like, I like those. He's using that uh, 
Jets birthday gift that you got from somebody a while back? <laughs> I do have a Jets shop gift card that I got like a year and a half ago that I just have not used. Um, Who gave that I used Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams jersey. There it is. I could spend it on a jersey, but... Because Adams will be here for a while, but I kind of like the way the shirt looks, so I'm thinking I'm going to go with that. I mean, jerseys don't go with as much. That sounds really No, they don't. Like, you can't wear them with, like, anything, really. Yeah, but, like, yeah, and a white T-shirt that, you know, I, I, or the yeah, white T-shirt, that, that can like, go with some stuff. khakis, and I can wear it with jeans. I mean, it goes well with that. I just yeah. don't like jerseys. I don't so, like the feel of them. They're just usually terrible. You can wear them over hoodies. But, um, anyways, um, so we have, I'm going to assume I missed a little bit there. I assume Ke- Kyle said McCown. Yeah. I, yeah. And I assume Justin, you said Hackenberg. Jamal Adams signs with Jets. Just you did? breaking news. Yep. He did? Let's go. Uh, Jamal Adams signed. There we go. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. I got that jersey, so. Uh, yeah, because we were all sweating the first round pick, not signing with us, guys. Yeah, uh, leading. Well, no, it's, just, it's just good to finally get it done. Um, that's good to hear. Um, Kyle, let's wait. Let's make sure that was an actual thing. Yeah, there he goes. Has a turn. Agreed to Are you serious? Well, I want to really make sure you, sometimes, What, you think I just made that up? Yeah, it's kind of. I'm kidding. No, he he got it though. Um, that's good to hear. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I'll go. I'll side and say Hackenberg. I think if it's close to going Hackenberg, there's nothing yep, in game. Anything McCown. Close. Not if close, McCown though. if McCown does start, uh, he, he I don't think he'll last after that Oakland game. I mean, he, I don't I don't think he's starting that many games. Um, but I think it'll be I think it'll be the best between Hackenberg and Petty. I think it'll be Hackenberg. If it's even close, it'll be Hackenberg. They're gonna give him every chance to win. Um, surrounded with this mm-hmm. young team, it'll be a good energy. Chance, and we'll get to watch it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a run first team. They're gonna hand this ball off to Powell, McGuire, Forte. They're gonna pound the rock. They're gonna feed the ball to to Sparon Jenkins. Um, they're going to and I guess it'll be Leggett in the first two weeks. They're gonna get the ball to their playmakers and Noon One Anderson. They're gonna move the ball around, but it's gonna be a run first. Trust this offensive line. Trust Powell and Forte. Uh, let's ground the pound. And then when you do throw it, you have some options. Um, so Get I'll go a new one, pal. Um, the other option here, the other, uh, the next uh, training camp battle here, is who's going to be the third string wide receiver? Obviously, we know it's going to be Anderson, or should know, that it'll be a new one Anderson on the outside. Uh, in the slot, however, it's a little more confusing. Obviously, our Darius Stewart is probably the favorite. However, he has been battling an injury um, or, or third round selection. Uh, so I guess right now you're looking at our Darius Stewart versus Sharon Peak versus Chad Hansen. Um, you could even throw in whoever your other receiver is, whether you keep Marquise Wilson or KD Cannon. Um, yeah. So, Justin, we'll start with you. Who is going to be the Jets slot receiver this year? Or is, is, is um, you know, a, you know, a noon one going to slide into the slot and move somebody out there? That wouldn't be a good move. But uh, who's going to be the Jets slot it, receiver? It all depends where we play a noon one. He can play inside and outside. That's the great thing about him. How, well, however, I will say, I, I know I did just give you that idea, but as I read at the top of the show, he, he is, let me get the exact stats, but he, he is, um, on the outside, his rating, his wide receiver rating is 104.8, and in the slot, it's 73.5. So it, 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 statistically, he's better on the outside. So just, um, you know, pound for pound, I slot think, receiver, who are you taking? Is it our Darius Stewart, Peak, or Hanson, or somebody else? I got to see more of Peak. Cause I don't know. I feel like he's, he had limited reps. That's the whole point. It's a prediction. Gotta you know, give you a prediction. Say Darius Stewart. Cause right. I like what he showed in college. He he had some good, really good spot spot years in Bama. So I'm gonna say Darius Stewart, but I don't know how confident I am on that one. Cause I gotta see this guy healthy before. All right, Kyle, your take. Um. I gotta go. I gotta go, Stewart. You know, all right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say. I, I actually really do like Peak as a prospect, um, but I do think mm, I'm trying to think. Oh my God! I'll go. I'll Darius Stewart. I'll go Darius Stewart. I think. I think he just. I, I love I him that's in college. The safe I think. I think if he if he's healthy, I think he'll be in. I think he has a lot of talent. I'm excited for him. All right, a uh, few more here, uh, three more, and then we're gonna wrap the show up. Uh, I guess we'll keep Justin on for the last three. Um, now this one's gonna be a little Ooh, interesting. Producer. Obviously, obviously Our we summer. have obviously. Obviously, we have Jordan Jenkins on the outside uh, as one outside linebacker. Um, but who, and, you know, maybe when it's third down, the Jets could replace Jenkins with Donahue and then have balls on the other side. But uh, I guess the question is, because they're going to move them all around, but who is going to play more snaps at outside linebacker, Donahue or Malden? We already know Jenkins is the top yeah. outside linebacker, but who is it going to be? And keep in mind, I mean, Malden's facing some legal issues here. Um, but He's innocent, innocent until proven guilty. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, he, but I'm just saying that you know that is that the is. Juice is loose. The juice my my point is my point is is Todd Bowles um, does seem like the type of coach that would just say you know I mean like Shell Richardson was practicing with the four stringers or something for a while. Anyways, the point is is um, yeah, that's the talent. Who do, who do you think will be playing more snaps or who who will be starting outside um, opposite um, uh, Jordan Jenkins, uh, Donahue Ooh, or Malden? Malden. But we got mm. we do have to we do have to acknowledge here that that does seem like Kevin Green has a bit of a man crush on Dylan Donahue and they, they, he are you saying really, he's are you saying he's biased then? No, I'm just saying it does seem like the Jets really really like this Donahue guy. Um, yeah, that's the, pass okay. the more skilled players we got, the better. So so Kyle, I, what's your take, Donahue or Malden? Um, depending on legal issues, I mean, if Malden doesn't get suspended. Molten pretty easily, but uh, if he does get suspended. It's on him. Really, that's pretty simple. Wow, I, I didn't good. think I didn't think it was a question. Like it, it was kind of like the Jonathan well, Harrison one. Yeah, but the one thing I will say though is is Donahue has been playing a lot, or at least was playing a lot with the first team in minicamp. I I mean at the very least I think what you could see is if Jenkins hasn't developed that as much um, as a pass rusher. I mean that doesn't mean he won't have a great season, but if he hasn't developed as much as a pass rusher, you could see Donahue and Malden in on third down together. I think that is a very viable um, option. All right, um, I guess we'll go. Um, these, now, these next two aren't really questions, so I guess we'll change it for who will have um, a better season by the end of the year, I guess, because these two are pretty sh- you know, much shoo-ins. Um, but Austin Sparrow and Jenkins versus Jordan Leggett. You have to keep in mind Jordan Leggett sits two extra games than Austin Sparrow and Jenkins where he's starting over him, um, but who will have a better season by the end, Austin Sparrow and Jenkins or Jordan Leggett? Just because that's not really a training camp battle. It's going to be Sparrow and Jenkins, but mm-hmm. Leggett is. Unless, unless Leggett lights it up his first two weeks, that's... Possibly. I don't know. I, Light it up I like think it. Be, I think Jordan Leggett's going to get off to a, a a slow start, and ASJ is going to come back ready to ball. So I'm going to say ASJ, but it wouldn't surprise me if Jordan Leggett is uh, over ASJ with the four game suspension. So I'm going to say ASJ. Two, two uh, game. Four. Two. Oh, two. Two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two. We got this one right. We're both not wrong yeah, on this one again. Talking. Now I'm getting tripped up between this one and Jalen Marshall. See, this is why we have so many damn suspensions. You can't even keep track of them. <laughs> yeah, I brought that up on that other show and, like, nobody even cared. So, um, ASJ all day. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I think ASJ. Now that it's two, definitely ASJ. If it was four, that's a, that's a different story. Yeah, absolutely. ASJ all day, Ben. All right. Um, yeah, I'll also go with Austin Sparrow and Jenkins. I wouldn't rule out Jordan Leggett having a solid first two games, um, or at least being somewhat of an impact. I think, I think I realistically, think jo- his, his target ratio should be around 20 to 25. I can tell how pissed Ben is That'd right now. That would be pretty now. good. For his rookie year, 20 to 25 catches, I, I call that a successful rookie year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And you can tell John Morton is going to definitely try to incorporate the tight ends. I think you can see... You definitely might see, um, you know, two tight end sets with Leggett and Austin Severian Jenkins in the field at the same time. Um, but as far as who will have a better impact, I mean, judging from our sources, Austin is in the best shape of his life. I mean, that's yeah. not just our sources, but I mean, that's another thing we, I to we actually have a direct source, though. We do I mean, have a direct source saying yeah. that uh, he expects Pro Bowl, uh, a Pro Bowl from from yeah. Austin. Um, so, thing. team chemistry. Jay brought that up. I don't think we had this team chemistry last year. Yeah, I mean, we definitely didn't. I mean, I think there were a I lot mean, like, of veterans in the locker room. Yeah, okay. Freddie Bishop working out with a freaking James Carpenter. Who would who would think offensive guys are working with defensive guys? You got the guys going out for golf. I mean, I, I think, I think they know. Onto I think the field know is six six to eight wins. Me and Ben are in agreement. Six to eight wins is really go. what we're going to land this year. That's that like only gives me confidence. To stop with the with the Sam Darnold stuff because we're not even in position yet for him. Okay, so what do we get at the end of this? We get a mediocre quarterback uh, and a mediocre I'm team for a, a year of camaraderie? Yay! I'm what, so yeah, happy. We potentially get a franchise quarterback when Hackenberg. We get confidence <laughs> from the young guys. From the young guys. That's such a genuine that, that's laugh. You need in young guys. You need confidence. and You, you need them to yeah, be ready to go. No, I was serious. Yeah, I, no, I, I look, Justin. I we're, we're sharing the same mindset here. I, I, do, I don't think this is as as dire of a team as as many people think. I think we're in a worse place um, 
last year than we were now. Like not 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 obviously in July. Obviously we had high expectations, but I'm just saying I, I think, think I think last year's team are... was worse than this team. Looking back on it, I I think we will look back at the end of last year or this year and say mm-hmm. this past year's team not only finished with a better record than last year's team, but was better. Um, last one, who will have a better season? Keeping in now this one, you're all going to be jump quick to say one guy here, but I want you to keep in mind. So it's it's Matt Forte, Paul Powell. I have to Google will have, it first. I have to Google it first. You, you, can, you have, can give it. No. You can give no. that at the end. Kyle. Nope. Give nope. that. No, nope. I have to do it now. No, <laughs> because it relates to something. Just all right. All right. He said that uh, it's weird that like uh, Freddie Bishop is working off an offensive lineman. All right, from their, from James Carpenter time in Seattle, uh, Freddie Bishop was on the CFL team. Uh, Calgary and Seattle are close to each other, so I'm sure they worked out at a similar place. So that's probably why they know each other. Calgary and Seattle are not that close to each other, Kyle. Yeah, they are. Like I like I said, I just Good googled. Who lives in the north? Like not close enough where it's like, oh, we bumped into each other. That's the club. It's a few hours away. It's an hour flight. So an hour flight, dude. It's a flight away. <laughs> why would that be? I can distance? fly from here to Tampa. I mean, that doesn't mean it's far. Kyle, you're gonna say an hour flight away is like the reason. Do you know how far an hour flight away is? How long is it driving? That's like um, four or five hours driving, right? That's gonna be four hours driving, four and a half hours. Well, I doubt Freddie Bishop like lived in Canada. I'm just saying, why would that? That's not a reason. <laughs> they're, oh, they're four and a half hours away. They probably ran into each other. There's nobody up in Calgary. Jesus, Kyle. Still cool for quite far away. You can get Seattle and Calgary are driving on the East Coast. I live in the Northwest, but driving on the East Coast, the Northeast Coast, I mean, you could four and a half hours, you can get through a few states there. It doesn't mean they all know each other. Jeez. Anyways, back to this. South Carolina. That, that was the thing that you had to cut me off with. Yes. Yeah. And I Matt Forte versus well. Bilal Powell. Keep in mind Bilal Powell's injury history. Will he be able to take on the number one running back uh, mantle I, and not not just not just take it on, but not get hurt? That's definitely something he struggled. He hasn't really made it past four or five games as the number one. Um, Forte is also pretty solid last year for what we you know paid and expected. I, I think people are, are sleeping last year. I, I've been saying this to you guys an awful lot. We were the only team that had two backs that had a thousand yards. Oh no, I think they're good. I'm just saying. All I'm thinking, purpose. All can purpose Powell yards. do 16 games of that? Yeah, I know. The question is, Powell, Powell needs to stay healthy, and that's why we're keeping Forte because we don't lose any money, and he's an experienced veteran. Can give him some touches. Can have the ball out of the backfield. But what we need to see is we need uh, Powell to get 15 to 20 touches per game. Um, Kyle, your, your take? I think they're both okay. So, if Bilal Powell stays healthy, um, I think he can be better than Matt Forte at this point. If he doesn't, he's going to remain second string. So. All right. Well, that will. Uh, I, I think. Look, I'll, I'll give my take on this. Optimism. I think, <laughs> that's what I just gave you. Thank you, Kyle. I think I think Forte uh, is a very good in between the numbers guy. I mean, he's a guy who run through the tackles, take the big hits. Um, so I think he'll still put together a solid guy, a season. I think he's a guy on the goal line that's also very valuable. Powell, I look, I think he is very good. He's like an Energizer Bunny, but that problem is, is, is he going to be the same Energizer Bunny in November if he's, if he's starting all these games? Uh, I definitely think the Jets need to remember to keep the balance, that there's a Forte and a Powell uh, and a McGuire, but I think they should definitely have Powell getting the majority of the carries. So maybe they divide mm-hmm. it as 60 goes to Powell, um, 30 go to Forte and 10 go to McGuire or yeah. you know, some some combination yeah, like that. Um, yep. Just I think they need to really balance it. Um, so just so you're making sure you're giving Powell rest because part of what makes him so explosive is when he's um, when he just uh, when he's on the bench and he can come in in fresh legs. I mean I forget the ridiculous he's, stat, but it was something like he's in, got a lot of mileage too. In the games that he got more than you know I I don't know I'm I'm gonna about to butcher the correct stat, but I mean he uh, in the games where he was getting more than uh, like. I think it was uh, Kyle me out. like more than eleven touches no or idea. something. He was getting like he was having insane games. You know, he had like I think he had four games where he got eleven or more touches. I'm gonna look this up, Kyle, while you talk. But I mean, he was just going. He, basically, when you give La Powell the ball enough, he's putting up numbers. Same thing with Quincy and Newell, well, hence why they made that shirt. But anyways, I think La Powell when he gets the ball is very good, <laughs> but you got to be careful not to overuse him. Um, that's that's no stick thing. figures on that shirt. It's like all words. It's amazing. All right, well, well, Justin, uh, I I really appreciate you calling in and, and doing this these uh, position, this training camp position breakdown, and as well as the last two, which were kind of season yeah, breakdown. Yeah, when are you guys coming out to MetLife this year? Um, uh, I'm broken. I live in Florida, so not. 
to be determined, possibly not. <laughs> I, I went Ben way of thing, like. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I went last year uh, for the Jets Patriots game, and you know, I am I'm a senior in high school, so I'll probably visit some colleges on the East Coast. Uh, I do my Miami down in Florida. I, I'm not going. To, I'm not. Uh, well, I'm not going down. Uh, Never go to the game, game in Miami. Miami. Never yeah, go no, down no. to the <laughs> game in Miami. No. No, yeah, no. I'll look. At, uh, basically, my point is, I'll probably look at some colleges in that area. So if if I'm if it lines up and I'm visiting at the same time, maybe I'll try to you know work the schedule that way. I could go, but if, if that that's that's a long shot, so we'll see. I don't want to say no, but but uh, possibly, uh, possibly not. Anyways, yeah, Justin, thank you so much for calling come in. Come to the game of Tampa. <laughs> if I'm gonna see the Jets on a Tampa year where they're not gonna be that good. If I'm going to see the Jets in a year, they're not going to be that good, and I'm going to fly to see them. I better see them at home. I think it's it's better to just see them at home, see them, you know, uh, where the you're surrounded by some Jets fans at least. Maybe, hey, maybe if I'm going to November, I won't be. But um, anyways, uh, Justin, give out your give out your Twitter so you can uh, so our listeners can give you a follow. Uh, at Justin twenty four thirteen. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling, Justin. Shirt. No. We finally have something to talk about in a couple more weeks. So let's I know. This, this is our, I mean, next week is no our problem. last show before training camp. We have some fun stuff planned for that one. Um, anyways, we but it, it'll be fun. Yes, yes, Kyle. I, we, we do. All right. Um, so hey, thanks, thanks for calling, man. That was Justin. Um, that was a really long call. That was a long Well, I mean, it's, bum, it's a bummer because it was Jay. Um, had to uh, had to leave a little earlier. Um, hope yeah. everything is fine with that. I think he just had to help out with something. Um, so for sure, hopefully... prime time like hurt himself or something. <laughs> he had to like go rescue him. Uh, well, who knows what happened? But anyways, producer um, wanted by the way. Producers, no. producers still wanted. Producer, <laughs> no. Um, anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Jet Take. Oh, um, I uh, six fifty six. Uh, why not? Ben, you really gotta stop saying West Coast time, dude. Nobody on the West Coast listens to this show besides Rumi. As much as I love the East Coast, I gotta be honest, West Coast time is much better. You can't you can't argue that. You watch football games at ten in the morning. I wake up and it's like, I can't I watch like football nine. games at ten in the morning. I need those like three hours of going to the store, getting what I need, and then like waking up for football. No, I, I'm too excited where it's just like, no, I, I just wake up, I get to How are you bed. excited for Jets games? I'm always excited for Jets games, even for terrible. I like to watch them. It's it's always fun to watch. Um, you just know, because you watch something doesn't mean you're excited for it. I'm excited for it every time. Anyways, you just roll out of bed. There's football, primetime games. You know, Monday night football or Sunday night football ends at you know eight thirty, eight 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 thirty. I mean, it starts at five thirty, so it's it's great. The afternoon, yeah, you know, it's just it's. I don't know. I, I like the timing for for West Coast. I do love the East Coast and stuff, but uh, no, I, fine. East Coast nine fifty seven. I mean, you're uh, like you're like that one or two. No, you're away, southeast so. coast. You're you're you. You said how much you hate traveling, so I don't think you get to talk about oh, well, it's, which is much better because first of all, you've never been to the West Coast, I don't believe. So I don't think, and I don't know where the farthest you've been. You you talk about how much you hate traveling. So I mean, you've lived in like one place, right? I've lived in one state. Yeah. Well, Sorry, yeah, my family is in a bunch Florida? of like hippies. Ben, you went to like Georgia, huh. right? Lived or been up to? No, been like where's where's the farthest you've been? Oh. Uh, Virginia. No. Uh, Baltimore, technically. Technically. All right. Well, yeah. it was know. in with, it was within Coast, state then. boundaries. So, Maryland. Oh, my God. I just realized I said Baltimore. M- within Maryland <laughs> state, state boundaries. I'm stupid. Wow. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> not a, that's not a good look for me. Uh, you can follow us at the Jet Take on Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, we have a pump-up video that I think it's over 3,000-something views. Um, so You're just going to well. go check it out. Why that till just, the end just go, just, yeah, until we're at the season. It's Just look us up at the Jet Take on YouTube. You can find our pump-up video. It worked pretty hard on that. Uh, I have an article releasing on NewYorkJetsFans.com tomorrow. Keep a lookout for that. We'll tweet it out. It'll also be up on our blog page. That one? Our blog page is thejettake.libson.com. Uh, go check that out. Our, our shop on uh, for T-shirts. Let me pull that up. The loyalist.com slash the jet take. That's pretty easy to remember. Loyalist.com slash the jet take. You can find our shirts if you want to buy our stick figures. Um, anyways, um, and then you can I always listen you. to our. You can always listen. Well, I, I, hey, I mean, why not market that, man? We have two minutes. Can I like? Can I just like say something? No, 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 no. I'm not um, going to say anything. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, bad. You oh, can like follow. Us. You, no, 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 no. We're where you can listen to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, Google Play, Stitcher. Um, we're all over the place. Uh, check us out, and we're also on YouTube to find our podcast. But 
definitely make sure you check out our blog page, thejettake.listen.com. That is all our content. And keep on the lookout for the article. Again, a huge thank you uh, to Kelvin Beecham for an interview. That was awesome, terrific, um, great guy. Um, you know, great player, but an even better person. And I had a really fun time talking to him. Um, he's doing some great stuff off the field. So did I. Off the field. For the record. And, and so did Kyle. Um, anyways, that'll do it for this episode of the... See how fast I'm just trying to wind this up before we yep. get Kyle. Uh, so anyways, that'll do it for another episode of the Jet Take. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Kyle, if you keep it appropriate, um, any last words you want to say before we uh, sign off? Uh, I recommend hair plugs. All right. Um, Producer wanted also. <laughs> Thank you for that, Kyle. Anyways, our content uh, thank was you original so tonight, Ben. Congrats, thank you. you did you did a good job. Original content. <sighs> I'm running the show with with a child. Um, thank you so much. No, you're running with you're running with a show with somebody who prides themselves on. Okay, what they all right, all right, all right. I Kyle, don't need Kyle like some skin. loser trying to bring me down. Okay, Kyle, you have thinner skin than um. I'm not, I'm not. We're not even going politics. Go ahead, Ben. Um, Go ahead, Ben. <sighs> Maturity issues, man. Maturity issues. No, I just don't like you're it like, when people... You're like Geno Smith right now. I just um, don't like it when people attack anyways, me and then okay, don't apologize. Okay, Kyle, 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 Kyle. Let's, let's wind the show up professionally. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. You can find all our social medias. Just look us up Twitter, at the Jet Take. That's the best place to find us. Anyways, thanks so much. Uh, follow me next week, Kyle Last week before... Oh, my God, I forgot. I follow Kyle for some... Let's just call them heated tweets um, at Kyle Fay NFL. You can follow me at Ben Blessington Seven. Uh, those are our personal Twitters. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. We'll leave you with the best chant in the National yeah, Football League. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys next Wednesday. Wait, that's the wrong one. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong I was like, one. My bad. I was like, this my bad. Yeah, I'm off my game. Hold on, this this one. My bad. <laughs>